accounts that is myths and facts about this covid now as the session goes on i would be taking questions and we'll try to answer all the questions to the best of our knowledge with whatever scientific basis is there and any evidence which is there at this point of time for answering those questions remember this covid has hit us like a storm it has hit each and every one or if it has still not hit most of us many of us are likely to get it by the end of the pandemic we at pune have already finished the first two parts of this each part or each wave of this pandemic teaches us new things each wave teaches us things about covid which we never knew about each wave teaches us about persons personalities mentalities so many things about life which you did not even think about or if it was in the pre covid area you would have thought that these things just did not make sense similarly there have been a lot of struggles associated with managing this right from the healthcare sector to the public sector everyone each and every one has tried their part in trying to ensure that we all get over this pandemic so at the beginning we would also like to thank each and every one of the people who is involved in the care of these covid patients in a big way for the important contribution they are doing to the society and the efforts they do to prevent further progression of this pandemic now coming to the topic of today's discussion about myths and facts many of you must be avid whatsapp users and i'm sure each of you all per day must be getting no less than 5 to 10 messages and each new message will tell you something which is probably contradictory to the previous message so someone will uh, tell you things that maybe you should have a head bath that may be good for covid someone will tell you to eat some food substances which are good for covid someone will tell you to do some strange exercises which are good for covid uh, many of these things do they have any scientific basis well to start the session i'll just try to cover some common questions which we face in our clinical practice some common myths and some common facts which can probably back up these myths or help you all to dispel these particular myths now the first myth of all is that everybody is going to die because of covid so remember be calm it's not like that if it was something even one hundredth of what this statement is we would not have been sitting before you and talking to you because per day after seeing more than 150 to 200 positive patients you are still able to do your routine activities if you take the proper precautions so remember the first myth that covid is probably going to kill or affect everyone i don't think that's true please dispel such myths we require to strongly refute such myths and how do we refute such myths it is by showing to the world and showing everybody by wearing a mask properly by maintaining social distancing properly and doing a hand washing and hand etiquette properly these are the ways in which we will probably dispel this myth now remember even if you catch hold of covid by bad luck only 1 to 2% of you all will get really seriously ill and that also if you come to the healthcare provider in time you are able to get managed to a reasonable degree and many of the outcomes have been good for the serious patients as well so remember first myth is is covid going to kill everybody it's definitely no no covid is maybe going to affect a large number of our population because that's the way the pandemic rolls and as our immunization improves and as we are able to vaccinate more and more people the incidence will come down over a period of time so please do not panic please maintain all the social 
norms or the distancing norms which have been given by the government and you all will be safe so the first myth i would like to say is i mean please don't panic about that i'll just run criss cross into some of the myths and another myth common myth i mean uh, i don't know how to say this but probably log bolte hai na gum mein maybe you drink and things like that the common myth is that there is some amount of alcohol per day prevent covid i mean this question has been asked to me by so many people so many times and uh, maybe the answer is well it can certainly reduce your anxiety about covid to a particular extent but please do not go consuming large amounts of alcohol and telling people that your covid can be cured that is not possible okay so the answer about the myth is can alcohol actually protect against covid the answer is no you can try it to reduce your anxiety i'm not i'm not advocating alcohol by the way but you can try it to reduce your anxiety but definitely no it is not a it is not proven by any means to reduce the incidence of covid it does not disinfect the body it does not does not cause any sort of viral load reduction okay so remember alcohol probably not to be taken as a treatment of covid similarly people tend to consume or there was sometimes some news that if you use bleach or use some disinfectant in a milder form it is going to disinfect your whole body remember don't do this stuff it's not on no amount of disinfectant is going to help you to eradicate the virus by ingesting it these disinfectants are meant for surfaces they have to be used in your house and they have to be used to clean the surfaces which may get infected by this virus and that's how they will be useful not by ingesting them so remember don't try things like disinfectant ingestion or disinfectant use these things are just not going to work okay so with with that initial part of introduction i think we can get on with the questions we'll try and answer the questions and in between the questions i'll try and talk to you about some more myths some of them are quite interesting but uh, nevertheless there are genuine problems or genuine queries by some viewers and we'll try and answer these myths with as much scientific backing as possible so if we could have the first question set or the first questions uh, we would start off in that very very soon and while we are waiting uh, okay sorry i get the first question this is from sanmesh deshpande thanks sanmesh it's indeed an interesting question you wear three or six layer mask can i still get covid interesting question so his question is if i wear a three or six layer mask does the number of layers in the mask prevent me from getting covid well the answer is twofold one is in addition to wearing your mask remember you have to follow mask etiquette that means you require to change your mask daily most important problem we encounter is the mask is worn below the nose now remember your mask has to cover your nose it has to fit on the bridge of your nose for you to get protected so you can wear even a six layer or a nine layer mask but if that mask is below your nose level no you are not protected you are liable to get infected by this virus coming to the scientific backing recent evidence by some societies is suggesting that a double layer of masks can sometimes be more protective by a single layer the backing behind this is probably if one layer inadvertently gets loose or inadvertently comes off the second layer will probably protect you remember the important point to take home is it probably doesn't matter how many layered mask you use commonly a three ply mask is the one which is recommended and the important thing is you require to wear your mask properly ensure that you change your mask regularly ensure that you clean your mask regularly an important point because many people once they wear their masks they think because the mask is worn over the face 
you will get protected but remember if you remove your mask and you keep it at the side of the room the mask could land on some dirt it could land on some dust and next time you wear the mask you could end up inhaling the dust and hence landing up in infection so remember proper mask etiquette is very important clean your mask properly wear a fresh mask if possible fresh mask daily surgical mask daily if you don't have that a plain cloth mask itself serves the purpose or like you say a three layer mask is good enough the evidence is for wearing two layers rather than one if you are in a healthcare setting then if you end up in areas which are managing patients then you use a mask call an n95 an n95 mask is a highly professional mask which prevents maximum number of microorganisms from getting through so sanmesh i hope i have answered your question with that explanation now interesting question this is from asia khan thanks asia for that question it's a genuine question and this question comes up repeatedly is does a diabetic person catch this virus faster now there have been certain people who feel that because your so called immunity may be a bit lowered because of the diabetes you tend to catch the virus faster but scientifically remember this corona virus does not differentiate between a diabetic or a non diabetic it will catch the person who doesn't take precautions so a person who is not following proper mask etiquette not following proper hand hygiene or not following proper social distancing is the one who will catch the virus faster now the हेलो सॉरी फॉर द डिस्टर्बेंस बट वी आर बैक देर वॉज अ टेक्निकल ग्लिच द क्वेश्चन वॉज एंड आई वॉज ट्राइंग टू आंसर द क्वेश्चन ऑफ डेज अ डायबिटिक पर्सन कैच द वायरस फास्टर दिस क्वेश्चन वॉज फ्रॉम आसिया खान it was a good question and i made the point that no the virus does not differentiate between a diabetic and a non diabetic it will catch the person who does not follow the precautions all said and done a diabetic person because of the high sugars may be predisposed to catch hold of other infections as well so during this whole time you require to take good care of your diabetes so thanks for that question another question by madhur firodia is will eating garlic prevent the infection now as an allopath person i am not the best expert to answer this question but i can tell you certain scientific facts behind this remember garlic has been advocated not only to prevent infections it has been advocated to improve the immune system 
many people advocate eating garlic to prevent heart disease to reduce your cholesterol levels as well however the scientific backing about garlic eating and corona virus infection is presently lacking so if you like garlic well go ahead and eat it there are a lot of people who like garlic you go ahead and eat it and let us hope that eating garlic boosts your immune system there is definitely no harm in eating garlic if you like it but at present there is no scientific basis which will say or which concludes that eating garlic prevents the infection the same is true for other other substances as well like turmeric certain other fruits some people try to eat kiwi some people try to eat dragon fruit so remember if you enjoy these fruits well go ahead eat them they are harmless they will probably boost your sense of well being and may add a bit of vitamins to your food as well but we require much more scientific basis to conclude or recommend the eating of garlic in such patients now tanvi raikar has a question it is an interesting question taking a hot bath or can drinking hot water prevent the virus from infecting you well again the answer is no the virus enters the body mainly by the inhalation route so if you come in contact with a person who has the virus in his lungs and that person talks to you at a close range or coughs in front of you or sneezes in your presence and you are without mask and the person is without mask you will probably get the infection by inhalation the virus does not spread by the skin route hence a hot bath or drinking hot water will not prevent the virus infecting you hot water in some cases of covid can help in easing the congestion in the nose so if you are comfortable with drinking hot water you can take warm water that will ease your congestion but that will no way prevent infection with the virus similarly is true with a hot bath remember rather than taking a hot bath a practical point or a practical point which can be done is if you go out outside your house and you go into a possibly infected atmosphere for example you go to the market and there you see a lot of people there you know that there is some chance that you may have been infected by the virus so when you come back if you dip your clothes in a bucket of hot water with a little disinfectant added to it that may probably sanitize your clothes and make it helpful or less infective to your family members so remember rather than having bath with hot water it is taking care of your clothes with hot water and a little disinfectant which probably which will prevent the spread of the virus to other people in the family so i think uh, that answers your question as well so dr asha welcome uh, she asks is there a hyper immune response now well the answer is maybe yes and the answer is maybe no in clinical practice what we find is in the second wave compared to the first wave we have had many more young patients coming in so these patients between the ages of 20 to 45 have made up a large chunk of patients which have come into the hospitals during this second wave and the possible scientific basis for this could be because young people have a much better immunity than the elderly people maybe their immune response or the immune system reacts much more powerfully or sometimes it overshoots the reaction this is called the hyper immune response in which the body produces immunity or immunity factors in excess of what is required to treat that particular infection or that particular bacterium and when the body produces anything in excess then that can cause harm so if you have a hyper immune response remember this could damage your lungs it could create problems in your blood it could create problems in your clotting well the answer to you is there is a definite hyper immune response we feel 
that it may be much more predisposed in the younger population because these are the people which have an intact or a robust immune system and if these persons develop infection they can react to the infection by a hyperimmune response so again the take home point is irrespective of which age group you are if you have symptoms you require to come to the hospital or seek help very 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 early okay so i hope that answers your question asha i will now take on more and more questions but uh, yeah this is from clyde almeida hi clyde how is it doing and is there any type of medicines that we need to avoid after we take the vaccine it's an excellent question it's a very very relevant question and a very very valid question so is there any type of medicines that we need to avoid after we take the vaccine remember once you take the vaccine you could develop fever you could develop headache you could develop body ache this usually lasts for around 48 hours and usually most patients after 48 hours will settle down the only medicine which we would suggest during this 48 hours is crocin or paracetamol so if you take paracetamol once or twice most of the persons will settle down by taking paracetamol there is certainly no indication or no role to take any antibiotic please avoid i again repeat please avoid taking painkillers painkillers like combiflam painkillers like voveran painkillers like brufen these are to be definitely avoided in this particular period immediately after the vaccine interestingly clyde coming to the point remember when we vaccinate our children they also get fever for two days isn't it and what do we do to them we keep them at home we sponge them we give them paracetamol this pandemic first time we are vaccinating people in the adult population on such a large extent and hence definitely the anxiety is there but remember paracetamol is all you require for a period of 2 days now all said and done if after 2 or 3 days you continue to have symptoms you continue to have fever you if you have cough if you have loose motions then definitely you require to see your doctor and under medical supervision you require to take the medication prescribed by the doctor so i hope that answers your question i will go on to the next uh, next question and while the next question comes in let me uh, come to some more myths which we can try and dispel or some more myths which we can try and scientifically disprove there has been so much myths about steaming so there have been myths that there's steaming so people do steam inhalations and the common misconception is that if you do steam inhalation steam will enter through your nose and as it enters into your nose into the lung it will sterilize all the surfaces and hence you will not get covid now is this true well there is no scientific basis which proposes or which encourages you to use steam as a treatment for covid remember the scientific basis is when persons of covid develop covid infection they can get inflammation of the nasal tissue and congestion now if you get congestion then yes definitely steam will help all said and done if you do inhalation there are certain points which i would like to tell you remember avoid using too hot water because if you use too hot water and you go too close to the surface you could end up burning your face so remember you have to keep a distance of at least 12 inches between you and the vessel in which you are making the steam remember you can cover your head with a with a towel or with a sterile cloth you can inhale and then as soon as the vapors stop coming from that particular vessel then you require to come out of that particular atmosphere remember steam does not treat covid steam can be used in patients of covid 
if they have nasal congestion and the reason being it relieves the nasal congestion they are able to breathe easier this may be used in addition to your other methods another important point is if you are steaming remember the utensil or the steam mechanical dispenser which you use should not and i again repeat it should not be used between you and other people in fact this has been found to be one of the main ways of spread of the virus so just remember your inhaling through the steam dispenser if by chance someone is infected by the corona that person's germs are directly in the dispenser and you are going to breathe in those germs the next time you do the inhalation so remember do not use the steam dispensers in between family members or in between you and your friends and every time you use the steam please ensure that you use a fresh fresh mechanism or a fresh pot for doing the steam okay so all said and done this this answers your question about the steam there are a lot of other questions about uh, do i have memory loss maybe in the post covid area so th this is a common myth and many people say that after i have had covid do i develop memory loss do i have memory lapses well the hilarious part of that is well if you want to forget some unpleasant circumstances in the in the reason in the region around the covid well definitely you have memory lapses and forget those forget those parts which are unpleasant for you but scientifically speaking there is a term called brain fog so brain fog is a term used for patients who have recovered from covid and once they have recovered from covid in the time after covid during the recovery they develop certain memory disturbances they are unable to concentrate too much on their work they are unable to respond or they forget things very very easily they are unable to communicate smoothly with their close ones this term has been ca called as brain fog it is just the fogging of the brain there is some scientific basis in this but the good thing is that if you take a good dose of good food good healthy home food have adequate liquids or hydrate yourself very very well then this particular symptom or this particular brain fog reduces over a period of a few months and in a period of few months you could be a normal person similarly there are lot of people who complain of sleep disturbances vague body aches in the post covid period now remember if you have any of these symptoms you require to see your doctor he will prescribe you basic medicines and most of you will settle down with just basic medicines a common symptom i don't know how relevant it is here but a common symptom told by many patients is they experience a abnormal amount of hair loss in the post covid period now is there any scientific basis behind that well yes there is definitely a significant proportion of people who have this complaint of experiencing hair loss in the post covid period again usually the good point is usually after 3 to 4 months the hair loss settles down it settles down just by taking supportive vitamins and supportive treatment you do not require to do anything more than that and most of you will recover if you experience anything like this okay so that is regarding the hair loss if there are any other questions we could now go on to some more questions thank you maya agarwal after covid that's a kab tak steam lena hai it's an interesting question so after covid how long should i continue with steam i would suggest that if you are comfortable taking steam you could do it for a few days there is no recommendation and again i will repeat there is no recommendation about the duration in which you have to continue steam after you have had covid 
I would suggest that till you have nasal stuffiness or till you are not able to breathe easily, this uneasiness happens, especially in the night time when you lie down or you are about to go to sleep. Maybe you should continue it in the night time for a few days till the symptoms of your nasal congestion reduce. However, there are no recommendations for use of steam. We per se do not advocate steam in the post COVID period. Your diet, your vitamins, your supportive treatment are usually all that are required to get you through in the post COVID period. So thanks Maya for that particular question. Now, Pawan, again, Pawan Karat, will it be line of treatment using IVIG for treating? So I think what Pawan wants to say is, is IVIG or IVIG stands for intravenous immunoglobulin. Is it useful for treating COVID-19 patients? The scientific answer to that is that presently there is no scientific recommendation for using intravenous immunoglobulin in COVID-19 patients. For people, what is immu intravenous immunoglobulin? Immunoglobulins are substances which are produced usually by the body and immunoglobulins usually act as antibodies or they act as substances which act against the infection in some cases. They are commonly being used by us in nerve conditions, in blood disorders. But in COVID, is there a use of IVIG? Well, the answer is that this particular fact has still not been scientifically validated. There are certain trials ongoing where we are using high dose of intravenous immunoglobulin for serious patients, but we require much, much more experience and much, much more recommendation to presently say or give an open statement to use it or not. So presently, the answer would be no. It is used only in desperate situations presently. It is not part of the guidelines in Indian situation presently. But yes, in an emergency, in a desperate situation, yes, we are still using intravenous immunoglobulin for, for no, it is not used for treating. It is used as an additional measure in addition to your full general level of care of treatment in such particular patients. So I hope, Pawan, that that has answered your question. Akshay Savant has an interesting question. He says, is COVID-19 like getting a cold? Well, the answer is maybe yes, because sometimes you have patients like you and me who don't even experience symptoms like a cold. So these are the patients whom we call as asymptomatic carriers, or these are the persons which have no symptoms at all. These persons are walking, going to work, doing the daily activities. They have no symptoms at all. These are asymptomatic. If you develop symptoms like a cold, that means you have your nose which is running, you have a blocked nose, you have throat pain. These are the people or the patients whom we would fit in the mild case scenario or the pre-symptomatic cases. So remember, COVID in most of the patients or the most of the persons could well be like having a cold. The important take home message is because young people feel that sif sardi ho gaya humko, kuch nahi ho jayenge, sif sardi ho jayenge humko, they do not take precautions. Remember youngsters, once you go home, your parents are at home, your grandparents are at home, your children are at home. These are the vulnerable group. So even though you are asymptomatic, you could still be shedding the virus in your breath. So that's the important point. Precautions, precautions, precautions. The answer is it could be like getting a cold in many of the patients. Yes. And in the present scenario, if you feel even a symptom of getting a cold and it does not settle in a short period of time, you must consult your healthcare worker for advice on this particular symptom. I hope that answers your question, Akshay. Nilesh has a question. Any cough-based illness is COVID-19? It's an interesting question, a good question. So uh, Nilesh asks that anyone with cough, do they have COVID? Well, the answer by most people is that presently, if you have any symptoms, you have COVID. 
unfortunate isn't it so even if you cough or sneeze in the market the people around you will say you have covid in the hospitals if you remove your mask and cough just to clear your throat people may say you have covid so remember uh, what i would say because pune is the epicenter of this covid any undue cough or any any unexpected cough or any cough which is associated with breathlessness or any cough which is troublesome must be treated as covid until proven otherwise so you must get your test done you must so show your doctor you must evaluate yourself the practical point is that many youngsters unfortunately are ignoring the symptom of cough and they ignore the symptom of cough till it is very late and when they come into hospital the oxygen level then drops so remember any symptom cough remember is an important symptom of covid if the cough is troublesome or if you are having even minor symptoms you require to get consulted or you require to assess properly very very fast to prevent complications remember if you assess yourself in time and get investigated well in time your chances of a good recovery are highest please do not ignore symptoms is what i would tell you nilesh any cough which is unexpected should definitely be seeking attention and yes definitely unexpected cough presently on a previously normal person or a previously asymptomatic person should definitely involve or definitely invoke your queries that yes this could be covid thanks nilesh for that particular question sumit chawan is it true if you can hold your breath for 10 seconds you don't have corona virus interesting now this particular question is interesting because we have a test called a 2 or 6 minute walk test and in this test if you walk and you measure your oxygen level before and after walking if you find a drop in the oxygen level it means that your lungs could be on the borderline stage and you require to seek help but if you can hold your breath for seconds no that does not mean you don't have you may well have corona virus in fact if you are asymptomatic you may be able to hold your breath for minutes you can hold your breath for a long time breath holding has nothing to do with corona virus breath holding has definitely issues with relation to your own lung capacity and the more you can hold your breath means that your lungs are probably fitter remember breath holding does not have anything to do with corona virus it does not mean if you can hold your breath for 10 seconds you don't have you may well have corona virus it's important that you look at the symptoms rather than this particular parameter of breath holding when deciding whether you have corona virus or not and of course the gold standard is testing for corona virus by getting your pcr testing done for corona virus i hope that answers your question sumit the next question is from dina covid can keep coming back to prevent a certain percentage how effective is vaccine to be taken as we hear post vaccination symptoms so uh, let me just address that question i think there are two or three valid questions which are coming out of that particular question so i feel the first part of the question is is vaccine effective in preventing covid well all i can say is if we want to prevent a third wave from coming in then please go ahead and vaccinate yourself as fast as possible there are so many messages coming on whatsapp stating that is this vaccine better or is that vaccine better or is ai vaccine better is the japanese vaccine better is the vaccine from united states better well the answer is you require to get some immunity at least so please if vaccine is available in your area go ahead get vaccinated post vaccination symptoms i mentioned in one of the earlier questions remember the symptoms last for hardly 48 hours at the most symptoms usually would include fever they could include a bit of chills they may be including a bit of body ache most of the symptoms will settle with only crossing remember interesting that this point is raised but have you thought of about it in this way when we vaccinate our children 
what happens to them don't they stay at home for two days don't we keep them at home for two days don't we give them paracetamol if required don't we sponge them at home don't we give them good food good liquids well that's the same you are required to do for the adults okay now covid can keep coming back to prevent a certain percentage i have already answered that before so thanks for the question vibhav has another interesting question what are the side effects of covid vaccination uh, we have covered more than 4 to 5000 this time about the vaccine and i would tell you about our experience in this the most important side effect or side effect so as to say is fever some people develop pain so wherever you take your vaccine you can develop soreness or pain at the vaccine site now remember the practical thing for you to do is do not do hot fermentation commonly people apply hot fermentation or hot bags on the area where the vaccination is done please do not do this do not rub the area that is definitely not to be done at the most if there is pain to an unbearable degree you can apply a bit of ice fermentation but nothing requires to be done beyond that now if the pain persists beyond that then you require to show your doctor this has hardly happened in any of the patients which we vaccinated till date ah oh, yes soreness has happened at the vaccination site fever has happened at the vaccination site rigors have happened at the vaccination site but this is easily treatable most of the symptoms they settle within 48 hours of the vaccination and again after that it's as good as new you don't require to take anything after that just ensure that your hydration is good during this particular time of the vaccination however an important point is if you have any symptoms before vaccination for example you are already having a fever you are already having a cold you are already having a running nose then please do not go for the vaccination you require to get treated first you may well be having covid so if you are vaccinated when you are in the active phase of infection it's a risky situation you require to wait for the infection to subside and then there are guidelines as to when you can take the vaccination based on the advice of your doctor or your healthcare provider so yes there are the they can i don't think the term side effects i think the main terminology would be symptoms or signs related to vaccination there is so much fear in people's mind about this term called reaction bite the reaction bite the kya reaction but that nothing happens you get pain it's just like a mosquito bite at the vaccination site you can get fever which can happen in children as well it's a common symptom in fact it's a way your body reacts to the vaccine by developing fever within 48 hours most of you will be fine i hope that answers your question dear viber tanya bajaj has a question wearing gloves when you go out decreases the chance of infection well the answer to that is yes and no yes because wearing gloves gives you an extra protective barriers on your hands and your hands without unprotected hands are hence protected but the important part is when you come home before you enter the house please remove the gloves and after you remove the gloves please wash your hands in a proper manner before entering the house if you wear the gloves you go to the market you go to the grocery store you are touching the grocery you are touching the tables in the grocery store maybe while you are going into the rickshaw or the method of transport you are touching the doors of your transport you are catching hold of the handle bars to support your transport all these are potential surfaces so your gloves could be infected when you come back home you require to dispose of the gloves and you require to wash your hands in an appropriate manner okay so yes gloves can help you reducing but your chances of infection are going to be reduced by your measures which i have repeatedly pointed out about social distancing masks hand hygiene these are the measures which are going to be mainly responsible for reducing your chances of infection so i hope that answers your question tanya now dipali swami has a question why people who have received covaxin vaccine are not allowed to travel overseas now i can answer that question 
in two ways. One is I am not the appropriate uh, authority to grant travel permissions or travel restrictions. The government authorities are having measures in place and rules and regulations in place which are changing from time to time. What you're saying is partially correct. There is one particular vaccine, vaccine A, which is being allowed to travel overseas. But on, at the same time, vaccine B or the one which you have mentioned, this particular vaccine also is undergoing rigorous methods. And I'm sure in the near future, these regulations will be changed. The only reason or the only thought I could say unofficially is probably the other vaccine has been tried and tested in many countries rather than the co-vaccine, co which presently is undergoing most of the trials in India. But however, that does not, does not mean that you take one vaccine, vaccine over the other. You should take whichever vaccine is available for you. And as and when the guidelines are released, I'm sure in a span of a few weeks or a few months, you any vaccine, be it vaccine A or be it vaccine B, will be allowed to travel. The important point is get vaccinated. That's important from our point of view. I hope that answers your question. So while we are Chetan, OK, we got another question. This is from Chetan Mandlecha. Saline nasal rinses fight corona infection. I think this question I have answered earlier. The scientific answer is no. Saline nasal rinses do not fight corona infection. They do not treat corona virus infection. Of course, they may help you to reduce the stuffiness in your nasal cavities if you have a stuffy nose or a running nose. But definitely, there is no scientific basis as of now which has proved them to be effective treatment for corona virus infection. There are other medicines available in the market and other measures which can treat coronavirus rather than nasal rinsing. So Sanmish Deshpande has another important question. Does a home pets prone to the virus and can they spread COVID? Now coming to that, remember this whole virus started in or presumed to start in some small village in China. And it seems that they were eating all sorts of things there. Maybe some people felt they were eating bats and some people felt they were eating all other, uh, other animals. A lot of this may be unproven and we really don't know presently whether the virus is transmitted to the non-humans in a major manner. Of course, yes, there have been instances in which the pets have developed symptoms of the virus. But again, if your pet has the virus, spreading to humans is another thing. As of date, there has been not much scientific basis which can tell you about the spread of the pets or whether the pets can spread the virus. All I can say is that if you're a pet lover, Pets definitely help you reduce the anxiety of Corona. They are almost like your companions at home. They reduce the anxiety. And if by chance you have Corona, I'm sure if you have the soft dog laying his head on your laps, you will feel very, very comfortable and reassured during this whole period. So definitely pets, I do not think they can spread the COVID virus. In fact, if you have COVID and you're a pet lover, pets may help you allay the anxiety of your coronavirus by being there as a silent supporter to you through in your through your struggle so the next question again is from asha is there any correlation between oral zinc yeah that's a valid question oral zinc and mucor mycosis now this mucor mycosis has taken the world by storm what is it to be simple, we have been treating patients of mucor mycosis for years. It is just in the preceding few weeks, we have developed fancy names to call it. Some people call it black fungus. Then to counter this, you have news, news attempts of white fungus, yellow fungus. I mean, these are sensationalizing and already known infection. Mucor mycosis is a fungal infection which has been present for years. We are treating it since years. It is more prone in the diabetic patients. This is a well-known fact. It is more prone in the people with blood disorders who are taking 
chelation therapy yes it's a very very old well known fact but is there any correlation of, over oral intake of zinc and mucormycosis there have been recently certain papers or certain whatsapp article which say that people who are taking zinc supplements for a long time are more prone for developing covid at the same time last year there were a lot of articles which said that zinc was helping in preventing the covid so whom do we believe from a practical point of view most of the patients whom we are treating are receiving vitamin supplements most vitamin supplements somehow or the other will have some amount of zinc and most of the patients which we have treated fortunately have not had mucormycosis so remember per se i do not think there's any correlation between zinc and mucormycosis however studies are required and indeed detailed studies are required to assess whether zinc affects the internal milieu or the internal environment of the body and if zinc affects the internal environment of the body and makes the internal environment favorable for growth of mucor then it's a different story but again as of now there is no recommendation or no complete scientific basis to say that zinc predisposes you to the so called black fungus so do not get panicked about black fungus again if you have symptoms pain loss of vision headache which are unexplained by other medical methods then you require to consult your doctor thank you jude fernandes hi jude how is it going will having a history of asthma affect me if i take the vaccine the answer is jude go ahead take the vaccine having a history of asthma is not a contraindication for taking the vaccine so if you have asthma it doesn't mean you will have any problem to the vaccine in fact if you have asthma it may make you a bit more prone to develop the infection if you do not take the vaccine so my suggestion would be if the vaccine is available go ahead take it nothing will happen i hope that answers your question jude so maya agarwal with another question डॉक्टर जी मुझे एक महीने हुआ है कोविड हुआ मुझे अब कब वैक्सीन लेना है मैंने अब तक एक भी नहीं लिया है इट्स एन इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन एंड इट्स मोर इंपॉर्टेंट माई अप बिकॉज ऑफ द फैक्ट दैट द गाइडलाइंस फॉर वैक्सीन आर चेंजिंग रिपीटेडली इन द पास फ्यू मंथ्स द प्रेजेंट गाइडलाइंस आर दैट इफ यू हैव हैड कोविड वन मंथ बैक देन फ्रॉम द डेट यू हैव हैड कोविड after 3 months you can take your first dose of vaccine safely so if you have had your covid in january you can take your vaccine in april so wait 3 months is the latest recommendation before taking your vaccination after getting infected okay similarly is true for example if you have taken the first dose of vaccine and you get infected by covid remember you cannot take your second dose immediately after recovering from covid you require to wait for 3 months before taking your second dose of covid i hope that answers your question so i think we may be running out of time we have around 5 minutes i probably will take a quick question this is from vinod upadhyay the vaccination center i got my first shot of covid shield is closed also i did not get any certificate is any difference between measurement of composition between first and second doses Uh, yes that's a valid question it is a common question remember if you go on to the government app and schedule your appointment the app or the government or the local health authorities will schedule you in a place which has the vaccine available presently luckily in pune we have a good supply of vaccines so vaccination drive is in full flow i am sure that you will get your vaccine at some center close to you if not of course you can contact us we'll definitely try to help you out in an emergency but remember you require to go online and get registered online for both your vaccine and if you go on to your covin app you can download your certificate from the app about your first vaccination dose i hope that answers your question so hardi patel for how long a patient can take aspirin medicine after recovery any side effects remember we are promoting or we are advocating aspirin to the people who are high risk so people who have had a complicated stay in hospital
people who have been in icu people who are having thrombotic tendencies that means people who have had a heart attack in the past people who have had a stroke in the past people who are elderly people who have diabetes these are the people who are a high risk group in this particular group roughly for a period of 2 to 3 months after your covid is the time you could develop complications so the present recommendation is for 45 days after the covid 45 days is the recommendation however we sometimes tend to continue aspirin in a small dose maybe 75 mg maybe 150 mg based on your physician or your healthcare provider this could be continued for at least 3 months for you to prevent any of the complication the recommendation is 45 days so valencia furtado once recovered from covid and tested negative but if the crp level of infection is still there and cbc is low do i need to check before taking vaccine after 3 months what i would suggest is after 3 months it would be safer if you repeat your c reactive protein and in these 3 months ensure that you have a good food intake good vitamin supplements most of the time cbc being low could be a sign of a vitamin deficiency you could increase your vitamin supplements and after 3 months it may be safer if you repeat your c reactive protein however there are no guidelines which ensure or which mention you to do your c reactive protein before taking your second vaccine but i would say if you have any anxieties in your mind yes get your c reactive protein i feel 99% of the time it will be normal next time once you ensure good hydration and good diet intake anita bora can we get second dose in another vaccination center the answer is yes you go online you can get your vaccine at any center which is approved for you and online you have a list of centers that definitely you can choose the center you are comfortable with if that is available to you or if it is not available you will be allotted a center by the health authorities you require to go to that center and get your vaccination there in time so sorry about that i it was indeed a very 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 interactive session but due to the limited time i have to cut short now i have enjoyed it thoroughly being with you online and answering as much questions as possibly i could take and as scientifically as possible for you i request you we are still not out of this even though the case load has reduced over the past few weeks we have still to catch up on our vaccinations we require to prepare ourselves as a community and as a country before we are hit or if we are able to prepare ourselves well then yes we will not be hit by the third wave so please 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 an earnest request from all of us all the healthcare providers and all your well wishers to please take care please wear the mask please ensure good hand hygiene please ensure good social distancing measures get vaccinated as fast as possible that's what we would like to wish you so wish you a very positive health keep well and we will be in touch thanks and signing off for now bye bye have a good day
कॉल आई लिव टू दिस क्रेन अच्छा सो आई लव टू रीस्टार्ट हाई गुड आफ्टरनून आई एम डॉक्टर कविता कृष्णा सीनियर कंसल्टेंट फिजिशियन एट सयाद्री हॉस्पिटल पुणे आई हैव अबाउट थर्टी ईयर्स ऑफ एक्सपीरियंस पोस्ट एम डी टूडे इन दिस वीडियो सेशन ऑफ कोविड डी कोडेड आई शैल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट होम केयर इन कोविड इन्फेक्शन वेन एवर एनी वन इज कोविड पॉजिटिव फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वन हैज टू अंडरस्टैंड वेदर वी आर फिट फॉर होम केयर और नो for that one has to know whether you are suffering from mild moderate or severe disease many of you may not be having any symptoms at all you acquired the covid infection from some contact at some gathering or from home so these are the asymptomatic covid patients who have no symptoms their tests are all normal and they are just covid test or rt pcr positive so they can go for home care besides this you also have mild illness or mild covid symptoms like mild cough mild uh, a little fever running nose a little body ache these patients may require a certain symptomatic treatment like antiviral antibiotics if you test their blood tests the reports will be almost normal x ray uh, chest or ct scan will also be normal the moderate and the severe patients have some findings in the lab tests in the x rays ct scans they may also have some problems with the oxygenation so these patients need to be monitored more carefully so when we have mild asymptomatic or some of the moderate patients they have the option of home quarantine now what are these home quarantine guidelines the state and the central government have given certain guidelines for home quarantine if you are asymptomatic or mild cases you can stay at home so what are the conditions you have to stay home in quarantine at least for 2 weeks you should have a separate room with a separate washroom to yourself you should remain in the room for 2 weeks you can move around the room but do not step out of the room if there is no separate washroom that becomes a problem so either you can go to a district or a city state covid care center if by chance that is not possible either then you have to see that every time you use the washroom it has to be sanitized absolutely properly should you wear a mask inside the room all the time it is preferable because if somebody else comes to see you or meet you or serve you food etc so then it is better that there's no virus droplets in the air or in the room but you should keep the windows open so there is some good cross ventilation you can move around in the room a caretaker who visits you should wear a mask what type of mask should you wear you can wear a double mask triple layer mask out of which one should be surgical one can be a cloth mask if you feel that mask gets soiled very easily or frequently you can put an n95 mask also the mask should be changed every 8 hours by a covid positive patient preferably only one caretaker should come to the patient either leave the utensils or the food outside in case they have to go inside to take uh, change the sheets or help the patient they should be wearing an n95 mask now what else should you do when you are in home quarantine first of all you should see that you are taking adequate vitamins hydration and food on time if you are a mild case you may have to take certain symptomatic medications like paracetamol antiviral if required an antibiotic as prescribed by your physician what should you monitor when you are in home quarantine most important in covid infection is the oxygenation level so you should have a pulse oximeter with you which shows you the pulse and the oxygen level you should monitor it at least 3 times a day what is normal oxygenation level usually it is above 94% you should have to check it at rest that is while sitting or lying down and after 6 minutes of walk test inside the room if it is dropping by more than 3% after walking for example it is uh, 97% when you are at rest and it drops down to 94 or below after walking then it is important that means there is some drop in oxygenation so you have to inform your physician and take the right advice older people who are above 60 or who have some heart disease can just walk for 3 minutes only in certain moderate cases also you can do home quarantine but in this case you have to be in constant touch with your physician what is safe oxygenation level 
up to 94% can be considered safe provided there is no uh, rise in the heart rate that is to say there is no resting tachycardia if there is heart rate is say about 80% 80 per minute initially and without any effort if it's going up to 90 or 100 then that becomes tachycardia along with that if the uh, oxygenation is dropping below 94% then you should rush to a, a healthcare center or consult your doctor regarding admission Okay, any questions so far? Okay, so we'll take some questions which have come. What is the treatment of mild cases? As I said, it is mainly symptomatic treatment like vitamin D, vitamin B, uh, vitamin C, maybe some zinc supplements, adequate hydration. At the suggestion of your doctor, you can take an antiviral or an antibiotic. Main thing is hydration and close monitoring of the symptoms. When should you seek oxygen? That is the next question. So oxygen, as I said, is required, may be required if the saturation is less than 94%, either at rest or dropping after the patient is walking in the room for six minutes or so. What should you do if your condition worsens? If the condition worsens, yes, you should report to your physician or your doctor, or if you cannot contact your regular doctor, you must rush to the hospital. When should I get admitted to a hospital? That is a repetition of the same answer. Whenever the oxygen is below 94, especially below 90, one has to understand that if the oxygenation is below 90%, that means that the patient may be going in for a severe pneumonia. What is a severe a COVID illness? A resting tachycardia, heart rate around 100%, saturation below 90%. And if you do lab tests in these patients, the CRP, etc., will be very high. The X-ray will be showing uh, infiltrates. The CT scan score may be more than 15 by 25. The blood pressure also may be uh, dropping in this situation. So one has to visit and get admitted to a hospital. Is remdesivir a must for me? Remdesivir is not indicated in all patients, nor is it life-saving. It reduces the duration of illness and hospital stay. So if the fever is persisting beyond six to seven days, and hypoxia is setting in, then the doctor may consider giving remdesivir to you. It is a good and uh, strong antiviral medication, but should not be given at home. It has to be given as an infusion in IV after admitting the patient. So all patients do not need remdesivir. Only after six to seventh day, if there is no resolution of symptoms and the patient has hypoxia, oxygen less than 94%, or a moderate to severe pneumonia, remdesivir should be administered to the patient. The total quarantine period, as I said, is 14 days. That is absolute isolation. Sometimes it so happens that uh, there are more than one patient in the family who are uh, having COVID infection. So the ones who are positive can interact with each other. The ones who are negative for COVID should be in a separate room. I think that's all from my side. There's a question by Tushar Malpote. If I'm getting breathless and my oxygen are okay, should I worry about COVID? Well, first of all, uh, if, if you're having cough, cold, and uh, fever, then you should worry about COVID. You should get your COVID RT-PCR done. But prior to that, maybe you should visit a physician Many of patients are feeling, get the feeling of breathlessness without actually drop in oxygenation level. Sometimes there's just anxiety. There could be other causes of breathlessness also, like bronchial asthma, bronchitis, where the oxygen level doesn't really drop. So first of all, you can do a six-minute walk test and see whether the oxygen is normal at rest but getting uh, dropping after walking. And as I said, there could be other causes of breathlessness also. Elderly patients could have a cardiac problem. Asthmatics may be having an asthmatic attack. And there are other patients like uh, kidney failure, where again, the breathlessness causes could be other, other causes. So you should consult a physician and then decide whether uh, it's important to do, which tests are important to do. But definitely with the current pandemic, if you have other symptoms like fever, cough, sore throat, you should get a COVID test done. Swapnil Naraki has another question. How many times should I check oxygen level in a day? 
you're talking about COVID positive patients. Yes, at least three times a day. And as I said, not just at rest, you should at least walk for six minutes. Elderly patients should walk just for three minutes and then check the drop in oxygen saturation. Patients who are not having any symptoms or not having any symptoms at all, there is no need to check your oxygen level daily. There's another question by Nanu Upadhyay. Ma'am, taking Limsi tablet in pregnancy is safe? Yes, it's absolutely safe. There is no problem. A question from Mr. Lavkesh. Do I need to repeat tests after completing my quarantine period? Uh, no. As for the government guidelines, you do not need to repeat your COVID test after your quarantine period. Uh, the patient of COVID infection becomes non-infectious after 10 days or so. However, for normal patients, quarantine is, as I said, two weeks. After that, there is no need to repeat the test. However, certain institutions or when you're crossing a border, traveling to another state or country, they may ask for a repeat uh, for a COVID test. Then you may have to do. Other problem is that the COVID test, the genetic material can be give a false positive COVID test for as long as four to six or even eight weeks. So that unnecessarily causes worry. So there's no need to repeat a COVID test after the quarantine period. You can go back and mix with the relatives and friends and start doing a normal uh, schedule with the usual precautions of do not stop wearing a mask, however, and keep the social distancing, avoid gatherings, etc. The same precaution should continue. And though the COVID, remember, you are also still prone to other infections, you know, normal infections, pollution, etc. So mask should not be discontinued. The question by Sakshi Pawar, after how many days post-COVID, is it appropriate to exercise? Now, it depends how severe the COVID infection was. Even mild cases have weakness for as long as four to eight weeks. So I guess uh, you should take the exercise slowly. If you have been home quarantined in a, for two weeks, so do not go for a 10-kilometer jog or straight off to the gym. You should start off with an outdoor walk of 15 minutes and escalate to 30 minutes, etc. Avoid gyms for another four to six weeks because sometimes you overweight your stamina and one gets too exhausted. These are even for the mild or asymptomatic patients. The ones who have been admitted and who are discharged, they have to closely monitor the oxygen levels, etc. when they uh, start exercising. And they should see that there's not too much of drop in oxygen, not too much of rise in pulse rate or change in blood pressure. So I would say every three days increase the duration and the intensity of exercise. But one has to remember that uh, after a COVID infection, it takes two months to normalize your original stamina, original life, what was before the COVID infection. So individual stamina withstanding and in age and other comorbidities have to be seen. And roughly after three to four weeks, you can start exercising, but go slow initially until your stamina is absolutely as to it was originally. And the ones who have severe COVID infection, definitely go very slow. Asha Kune has a question. Can you please explain about happy, happy hypoxia? Yeah. So uh, as we said, we uh, a patient uh, has COVID infection and the initial saturation is 96, 97%. And as we saw in the second wave of this pandemic, there were many patients who say that the saturation was 96, 97. And all of a sudden, they were at 90 and they were admitted and there were CT scans were normal and then they had a severe pneumonia. So there is a duration from, say, 97 to 93 or 94, where the patient may not complain of breathlessness and the saturation is remaining 96, 97, but they're not feeling anything. So this is a stage of happy hypoxia because they're resting, they're at, uh, you know, on quarantine, they're resting at home. So this is the right time to do the walk test. You have to do a six minutes walk test. So this is the time when the immuno immunological phase of uh, COVID is started. Say after, especially between six days, six to day 10. They are not, they are feeling better because the fever is gone and their oxygen levels are good, but they're not realizing that the infiltrates in the lung are increasing. So that is why when you are to this, for those two weeks, COVID is a two week illness, out of which the happy hypoxia uh, phase is from day six to day 10. So they should do the oxygen levels uh, three times a day at rest and after six minute walk. 
So this was a drop of more than two to three percent. They could be in hyper hypoxia. So it's worth repeating a CRP, visiting your doctor, maybe do a CT scan, maybe do a D dimer blood test at this point of time. If there's any doubt, you should visit the doctor because all the complications which happen are between the six to ten days. Most of them worsen during this time, and if they reach the hospital in time, they get the right medications like steroid and remdesivir. If they are going into hypoxia. that is the right time so happy hypoxia is basically in somewhere in the second week where the patient is feeling better because fever is not there and they're not feeling breathless at rest oxygen saturation looks good but in 2 to 3 days they may worsen so this is the crucial time where you have to be in touch with your doctor maybe repeat a crp d dimer check your oxygen level at rest and on walking nanu padhya ma'am can pregnant women take covid vaccine Uh, <clears throat> the guidelines have not yet come for approval in pregnancy, but they are soon to come. The Foxy or the Gynecological Obstetric Society has applied for it. Maybe we will uh, soon be able to get the approval. Uh, but at the same time, I should make a comment in feeding mothers, lactating mothers. It is advised. It is now they approve for vaccine. Now there are two vaccines as of now in India. We have Covishield and uh, Covaxin. uh covaxin they can definitely take in lactating mothers uh covishield there is some small risk of the blood clots so in postpartum or post delivery phase when the mothers are feeding for 2 to 4 weeks there is a little risk of uh, clotting so either the feeding mothers can take it after 4 to 6 weeks or they can take the covaxin would be preferable and i did not know about the sputnik vaccines etc but pregnancy i think we just have to wait a little while for the guidelines to come Maya Agarwal has a question. Doctor Ji, my daughter March 11th got vaccine. Liya tha. April 24th, ko usko COVID hua hai. Ab second dose kab lena hai baby ko? Okay. So pehla dose abhi ho gaya hai. April 24th ko usko COVID hua. So wo home quarantine thi. To 15 din ke baad recover ho gayi. तो उसके तीन महीने बाद मतलब अप्रैल ट्वेंटी फोर्थ से हमको साढ़े तीन महीना काउंट करना होगा उसके बाद सेकंड डोज ले सकते हैं बाय चांस कोई पेशेंट एडमिट होता है तो शायद वो दो हफ्ते के लिए हॉस्पिटल में होगा या तीन हफ्ते के लिए हो सकता है एक हफ्ते के लिए भी हो सकता है तो डिस्चार्ज के बाद दो हफ्ते दो तीन महीने के बाद ओके सो so, तीन महीने के बाद सेकेंड डोज लेना है अगर क्वारंटाइन किया है तो क्वारंटाइन के तीन महीने बाद हुए तो उसके तीन महीने बाद अंदाजन साढ़े तीन महीने बाद ले सकते हैं स्वप्निल नराके हैज अनदर क्वेश्चन व्हाट आइटम्स डू वी नीड फॉर होम केयर फॉर एल्डरली कोविड नाइनटीन पेशेंट्स ओके सो एल्डरली कोविड नाइनटीन पेशेंट्स ऑफ कोर्स द मेडिकेशन यू हैव टू गिव यू हैव टू गिव द पल्स ऑक्सीमीटर टू देम you have to get the regular medication that becomes a challenge because they already have there so many medications many of them their hypertension diabetes or asthma or heart plus extra vitamins and if required antivirals etc that is one part they have been fed on time and the liquids also because elderly patients if they uh, get dehydrated then there's a likelihood of getting some uh, kidney problem acute kidney injury many of them cannot take care of themselves so they need a caretaker that is the main challenge they cannot read well they can't attract or they need spectacles they cannot change the sheets in the room they cannot so those things become a challenge so either caretaker or the relative who's uh, negative can look after them so they should wear a n95 mask and go to the rooms then they have to sanitize the room properly the sheets etc have to be sanitized properly and the door knobs all this the cleaning of the room has to be done they cannot be left there that is one important part and if any relative is also covid positive most of the elderly who get covid 19 infection uh, the younger members in the family are also positive so i think it, taking care at home becomes okay so the covid 19 positive relatives younger relatives should look after them well because uh, elderly is definitely and the weakness is in the weakness and fatigue many of the elderly patients do not have cough cold fever they may not develop pneumonia but the exhaustion is very very severe so dehydration should not happen they should eat their meals on time if they are diabetics their sugars have to be checked so if you feel it's challenging it's better to admit them so they can be looked after for those uh, you know one to two weeks that would be better
and you have to monitor their oxygen. If they can't do it themselves, somebody else has to monitor for them. And it is not just the oxygen, but monitor their pulse rate and blood pressure also. Yes. Shraddha Deshpande has a question. How many times steam should be taken at home? Steam has their own. I do not know how much really steam helps in COVID, but you can take up to two to three times a day. So it's not that it is mandatory. If the steam opens up your nose, your blocked nose, and it makes you feel better, you can take it up to two to three times. The care that you have to take in to take while taking steam, do not keep the steamer too or vaporizer too close to your nose or mouth. That can cause problem. The liquid in the steamer should be the lid should be tightly kept. Do not drop that uh, hot water on yourself because then it'll do more harm than good. But the steam is not mandatory. You can just drink. Don't avoid cold water. Avoid direct exposure to the air conditioned floor. Those are all more important things. Webhav he has a question. Is influenza vaccine found effective to contain COVID and concerned issues in small children? As of evidence, no. Though there were some studies, the influenza vaccine prevents COVID. It is not so. Influenza vaccine is separate. And COVID is a separate thing. So you can give the influenza vaccine to the child as per schedule, as per the advice of the pediatrician. So they do not fall sick with non-COVID or influenza illnesses. Okay, But itself, it is not effective. Which exercise we should do for fast recovery uh, by Mr. Lavkesh? Breathing, actually, COVID is mainly causing problems in the lung. So fast recovery, also we're talking about the lungs. So deep breathing exercises are good for patients who have no uh, pneumonia at all. They can just do deep breathing exercises. The ones who have moderate to severe pneumonia, you can do a spirometry exercise under the supervision of a doctor or a physiotherapist. Regarding other exercises, do not do intense exercises in the first four weeks. Do not do things like Kapal Bharti or severe blowing, which can cause a valsalvas maneuver. Do not pent up the air and blow because sometimes that can cause problems in the lung. Normal stretching exercises like yoga are okay, but no strenuous exercises. Okay, do not try to do Surya Namaskar and all that because you do not want any extra load on the lungs. That is one part. Simple walking, as I said, as for your stamina, you can do. Okay, and main thing is you just have to stay healthy. That is more important than uh, all exercises, mild to moderate, are good for good re fast recovery. There's another question by CF. Can anyone have food allergy and penicillin allergy uh, take the vaccine? Any particular vaccine in India? Okay, so uh, anybody who has had severe food allergies uh, should be careful. If it, the Allergies can be just mild. Patient just had a little minor rash or they can be moderate where uh, they got a lot of rash all over like wheels and urticaria, a lot of swelling of the eyelids and they had... Uh, Difficulty in swallowing, difficulty in breathing. So these patients definitely uh, there is a risk of any vaccine for so to say. And uh, regarding penicillin allergy, penicillin is not used anymore since a very long time. So many people who say they have penicillin allergy, really we don't know whether they receive penicillin at all. Uh, uh, at the same time, amoxicillin and other al drug antibiotic allergies should be taken into cognizance. Uh, you can. Take the vaccine with due precaution, inform the physician, and you have to tell the caretaker or healthcare worker there that uh, I have this history, then they can take extra care in case you get a reaction. Or then do not take. You know, <clears throat> Some patients have taken the first dose and they had no problem at all. But they can go for the second dose. Any particular vaccine for patients who have had allergies, uh, both can cause uh, reactions. Anybody with severe allergy, both are contraindicated. But probably Covaxin, they say is safer if you have any severe food allergies. But it's with due due precautions. And please inform the healthcare worker. Stay there for half an hour to one hour after the vaccine has been given to you. And be in touch with a regular physician if at all you have taken the vaccine and you have a history of allergy. Mr. Heman Bapat has a question. What are acceptable levels of oxygen? Uh, saturation while I'm in home quarantine, went to contact a doctor. So one is absolute value. So above 94% is acceptable. When to contact a doctor, definitely when it falls below 94, more severe when it falls below 90. At the same time, if your baseline oxygen saturation on day one, or if you checked it before, was 98, 99, and it drops to 95, 
that is important so uh, absolute value below 94 more severe below 90 or a drop in three or more like from 99 to 96 or 95 is also important you should contact a doctor uh, yeah, this question i've already answered uh, sakshi pawar is there any correlation between low vitamin d and v12 levels and covid not really it doesn't mean that a person who has low v12 or d uh, d3 will get covid at the same time, these are uh, vitamins which help in good health and immunity and take care of overall well-being. So if it is, uh, if you're getting COVID infection, definitely you should supplement the vitamins. And if your levels are low, if you have anemia, you should have a normal level of B12 with a healthy diet and no harm in taking supplements. But it doesn't mean that low levels will cause COVID. Taking vitamin supplements can prevent COVID. Taking vitamin supplements improves our immunity. So maybe it improves our capacity to fight COVID. So we may tolerate the infection better. It doesn't mean that if I get exposed to COVID, I will not get. That is not so. It will just improve our, like even the vaccines, they are boosting our immunity. Okay, it doesn't prevent infection. It may prevent moderate or severe disease. That is one. And if you're already taking good vitamins, then we will not get that much drop of uh, hemoglobin or WBC count. It does not prevent. It only reduces the severity. It may improve our immunity or capacity to fight the infection. There's a question by Sanmay Deshpande. Can digital thermometers be 100% effective in detecting COVID-19 patients? Uh, digital thermometers, it depends where they are used. The ones which are used in the malls and the airports and everywhere outside or at the entrance are uh, a distance away from the forehead. So I guess uh, they are not very, very effective. At the same time, maybe there will be a difference of one to two degrees. So anybody who's got a 100 degree temperature will definitely be picked up. But it's on borderline 99, etc. So I would say the sensitivity is about 80, 70 to 80%. So high fevers will be uh, picked up. The lesser fevers may not be. You also have digital thermometers which are used in the armpit. They are definitely better. So individually, you should check your own temperature with a digital thermometer which can be kept in the armpit or the groin crease, that is to say. In public places, of course, you have to use the digital uh, forehead uh, digital thermometer, which is uh, uh, not really 100% effective. That is one. Second thing is all of them do not have fever. COVID-19 patients, first few days, they may just be in incubation period. Some may have just a mild sore throat. You know, so very mild symptoms do not have fever. So it is a thermometer is only to detect temperature, which all of them may not have. So it is just a tool. It is not really 100%. Far from 100%, actually. Shailaja Vedya has asked, does hypothyroidism hinder absorption of vitamin? Okay. Not directly, but hypothyroidism, if moderate to severe, causes swelling in the mucosal surfaces of the intestines and the stomach, etc. So it causes swelling which may hinder absorption. By itself, it does not. If it's mild, it does not. Severe hypothyroidism will hinder all types of absorption. Okay. Vishal Malputri has asked, if all the family members are infected with COVID-19, can the less symptomatic person take care of all the family members from home or they can even infect other members more no no that doesn't happen once covid positive you will not infect the others anymore so definitely as i said even earlier if the elderly members in the family so the younger members who are positive who are less symptomatic should take care of these family can take care of these family members at the same time what is more important is if somebody less symptomatic today, they can become more symptomatic tomorrow. So they should not overexert. They have to look after themselves also. The general concept in the last year, the first wave was that only the elderly above 60, etc., got more sick. We've all seen in the second wave that the younger patients between 30 to 40 were the ones who had severe disease. And that was because they thought they were fit or the virus was too strong, or the immunity just fought against them. So the less symptomatic, if they are young, they have to take care of themselves. They have to check the oxygen saturation. They also have to take their medicines. And then they can definitely look after the elder family members. They will not get infected more. Asha Puni, alcohol consumption can prevent COVID-19. Is it true? No, not really. 
Yeah, in fact, if they get COVID-19, they should reduce the alcohol consumption or avoid because many times COVID-19 infection can cause liver in, uh, liver damage or little elevation of liver enzymes. The concomitant alcohol consumption will make it worse. The patients who are taking uh, Fabiflu or Remdesivir who are being given by the doctor, that also can affect the liver. So from that point of view, alcohol should actually be avoided. Alcohol by itself doesn't prevent COVID infection. So love cases are using sanitizer. Will it create some skin infection? Any alternative to keep hand sanitization? Using sanitizer is become a sort of a hype. People overuse sanitization. Some of them have got skin allergies and very severe dermatitis because of overuse of sanitizer. But it itself doesn't cause infection. It causes skin irritation. And if that gets infected, then there is skin infect. Directly, there is no infection. So the best alternative to hand sanitization is simple soap and water. So wherever you have soap and water in the house or at the workplace, use that. Sanitizer is when you're traveling, when you're in the vehicle, you're outdoor, where you don't have access to soap and water. So there you use sanitizer. Quantity should not be too much. Do not just pour it over your hands. You just quantity, rub it properly on your dorsum and both sides of hands, etc. And if you feel this irritation, of your skin after the sanitizer, that means it is not suiting you. So either change the sanitizer or stop using it. Asha Kune has asked, how many hours rest in prone position? Okay, so uh, there is prone position is not recommended for all. It is recommended for people who have a pneumonia. So we can talk a little more about breathing exercises here. So there's something called a uh, CAR protocol where you have, uh, you know, you have awake, reproning, proning position. So there's a protocol here. So every few hours, say every four hours, you can follow this protocol in which you can do 15 minutes prone, 15 minutes sitting straight or upright with a backrest, 15 minutes on the left side, 15 minutes on the right side. But if person has moderate to severe pneumonia, the more prone you lie down, that is the best for you to improve the air circulation in the lungs. At the same time, one has to remember, one should not go prone if they feel more breathless in prone position. One should not go prone immediately after food. Okay, they should not go prone in deep sleep. So, and when they go, go doing prone position, they should keep their head face on the side. Otherwise, the nose can get smothered. Maya Agarwal, Dr. Ji, I have a seven pehle COVID hua tha. Mujhe head mein darad rehta hai na, thodi weakness so, weakness time time vitamins head doctor bp check अगर उसके साथ आंख में दर्द है सर्दी हो रही है आंख का रंग बदल रहा है नाक से कुछ काला डिस्चार्ज निकल रहा है तो फिर अपने डॉक्टर को दिखाइए जरूरत पड़े तो जांच करवाइए खांसी हल्की अगर जिस पेशेंट को निमोनिया होता है हल्की खांसी एक दो महीना भी रह सकती है तो उसके लिए एक बार डॉक्टर को मिल लीजिए उनको अगर लगे कि आपको कोई मेडिसिन की जरूरत है नेबुलाइजेशन लेना है तो आप ले सकते हैं अगर उन्हें लगा तो एक्सरे करवा सकते हैं अगर खांसी के बाद बुखार भी आ रहा है तो जरूर डॉक्टर को मिलिए सो so, अगर आपके सिम्टम्स सिर्फ वीकनेस है तो धीरे-धीरे ठीक हो जाएगा पर अगर सिर दर्द नहीं जा रहा है खांसी बढ़ रही है बुखार आ रहा है तो डॉक्टर को मिलिए क्योंकि पोस्ट कोविड दो या तीन महीने चलता रहता है तो जरा भी सिम्टम्स जो ठीक नहीं हो रहे हैं तो अपने डॉक्टर को मिलके सही दवाई और जांच करवा लीजिए आराध्य बोरो मैम आई हैव ऑन माय कोविशील्ड फर्स्ट डोज ऑन 11th मई Second dose has been increased to three months gap. Can I conceive or plan pregnancy between first and second dose? As of now, uh, vaccination for COVID is not recommended during pregnancy. So I would recommend you finish your second dose and then plan your pregnancy. That would be safer for everybody. You will be more immune to the COVID infection, hopefully. So during pregnancy, risk of COVID infection will not be there. See, after first dose, you are not got any immunity for, from COVID infection. After second dose, only you will get immunity. Second thing, the COVID vaccine is not yet recommended for pregnancy. So after second dose, also it will take, take eight, eight weeks to develop immunity for COVID. So precautions to aapko lena hi padega. 
और इस बिटवीन अगर आपको इस बीच में अगर आपको इफ यू गेट कोविड इन्फेक्शन देन कोविड इन्फेक्शन इन प्रेगनेंसी इज अगेन अ प्रॉब्लम बिकॉज इज अ रिस्क टू द बेबी एंड टू यू सो प्रेफरेबली टेक द सेकेंड डोज एंड देन प्लान द प्रेगनेंसी Tanya Bazaar, Bajaj, how many uh, days of proper rest is required if someone tests positive? So two weeks is your quarantine in which you are resting. After that, it all depends on your stamina, how severe your illness was. The ones who have severe illness, moderate illness, the recovery takes six to eight weeks. The ones who have mild illness also, they try to uh, get back to work, but they feel exhausted. So I would recommend after two weeks of quarantine, uh, try to work from home for a week. then try to go to work if you want or activity whatever you want to do and go slow first day if you're go, uh, working or doing your activities for 2 hours next day 4 hours step it up slowly because otherwise you'll get headache you'll get weakness and again you'll have to take longer rest so proper rest ideal would be 4 to 8 weeks but every time it is not possible so i would recommend 3 to 4 weeks Ravindra Shinde has asked: Is it required to keep recovered person in isolation for 14 days after treatment? No, 14 days is from the day of COVID positive. So after that, if they have been critically ill, you can keep for seven more days of isolation. So that is 21 days after they are discharged or whatever. So total can be 21 days in critically ill patients. Critically ill, I mean who are admitted, who are moderate to severe pneumonia. But otherwise, recovered patients total the 14 days from the day of COVID positive. Priyanka Madhuria has asked, "Man, my baby is two months old. I am taking the vaccine. So, will the baby have any effects? And how long do I breastfeed? Or what are the precautions? No, the baby is not going to have any problem with feeding. But if you have a cold, you can rest. If you have a problem with feeding, you will have to keep your attention. Do you have to feed on time? Do you have to feed on time? Do you have to feed on time? या फिर मिल्क निकाल के समबड़ी एल्स कैन फीड द बेबी याद रखना आपको वैक्सीन के बाद थोड़ा बुखार आ सकता है और अगर आपने मिल्क को एक्सप्रेस नहीं किया फीडिंग नहीं किया तो आपके ब्रेस्ट में मिल्क कलेक्ट हो जाएगा उससे भी फीवर आ सकता है सो मिल्क तो आपको निकालना ही है अगर बेबी को फीड नहीं करना है तो टॉप फीड भी दे सकते हैं बट ऐसी जरूरत नहीं है यू कैन फीड द बेबी बट अगर आपकी तबीयत ठीक नहीं है तो यू कैन टेक समबड़ी एल्स टू टेक केयर ऑफ द बेबी ब्रेस्ट फीडिंग में कुछ प्रॉब्लम नहीं Hydration अच्छा रखिए, okay? Uh, our Ananda Krishnan has asked, can I take vaccine after giving birth to my child? So I've answered this before. Uh, you can take the vaccine, preferably if it's the first six weeks, take co-vaccine because uh, it's safer. They say it is safer for clotting defects. What happens is after the birth of the child, for about six weeks there are risk of uh, clotting. You know, like the blood become thicker, DVT, etc. So Covishield has some reports of increased clotting. So either if you are taking Covishield, take after six weeks. Otherwise, take up any vaccine after any time after delivery. Ishwar Malpote has asked, if I am not COVID positive, should I wear N95 mask if I am taking care of someone with COVID at home? Yes, it's preferable to take wear an N95 mask if you are a caretaker of a COVID positive patient, or if you can't procure an N95 mask, then You can wear a double mask. Both should be triple layer mask, preferably one surgical and one uh, cloth mask. Remember, N95 mask does not work after eight hours, so do not reuse the mask again and again. So, using the mask, you have to discard it after eight hours, whichever mask you're using, or change the mask. Mr. Lavkesh has asked, "Can senior citizen go for home quarantine?" Earlier, the guidelines a year ago were that senior citizens above 60 could not go for home quarantine. Later, the guidelines became more relaxed because of shortage of beds, etc. And some of them are really stable, so they can go for home quarantine with strict supervision. And you have to have physician in the loop. If they do not have a caretaker, if there is nobody to feed them properly, if nobody to monitor them, then definitely it's better to admit. Home quarantine for senior citizens is strictly with supervision, either a caretaker from the house or a caretaker, uh, you know, among a doctor who will daily take their feedback, etc. And the trigger button for admission should be faster in these patients. If you feel they are not eating, they are not passing enough urine, or the oxygen levels are dropping even a little, heart rate, BP is fluctuating, it's better to admit them. 
Madhurja Kalita has asked, my sometime right and left chest pain, why any solution? Um, were you having COVID infection? Yeah, because chest pain with and without COVID have different uh, explanations, that's why. So uh, if you had a COVID infection, you had a pneumonia, then sometimes chest pain can be there. So if it's not with any dropping in the oxygen, that should be fine. And uh, you have to see why there is chest pain. It's difficult to answer this question without knowing more details. So it's better to meet your doctor and discuss more in detail about your symptoms and what investigations you did. Tukaya Tamboli, would you recommend taking Sputnik V vaccine? Uh, as far as I know, the Sputnik V vaccine has not arrived in India yet. It is on, on the schedule. It's going to arrive soon. Uh, some of the people I know in Russia have not had any uh, side effects with the Sputnik vaccine. But our population response has to be, still to be observed. We need more reports. Can Co Sanmish Deshpande has asked, can COVID-19 spread through food? No, not really. It doesn't spread, spread through food. Yeah, so I think uh, we are done with the questions. Uh, it was a nice uh, interactive session. Uh, okay, we got one more question. I'll just take that. Yeah. Ananda Krishnan has asked, my wife is pregnant 36 weeks. What kind of diet my wife should follow to increase immunity? Also suggest some tips to reduce anxiety regarding the delivery in this pandemic situation. So 36 weeks means there's very little time left. So I think you should start preparing for the arrival of the baby. Uh, keep her happy. That's most important. Talk of good things. Tell her not to watch the news channels, which only show negative things. Let her watch happy movies, read happy books, listen to good songs. Uh, that is the best way to reduce anxiety because I wouldn't advise any anxiety pills at this point of time. And a lot of deliveries are going the normal way, the way it was before the pandemic. So tell her to relax. A gynecologist will do a good job, I'm very sure. And the babies after in the pandemic are arriving healthy and there's been no problem. We are taking all the precautions. Diet, healthy diet with a lot of vitamins, that is fruit, vegetables, normal diet with a good fiber, like salads, etc. So she doesn't get constipated. So tell her not to be anxious. And the good thing is now the second wave is also receding. So hopefully we will not, uh, you know, have too many patients of COVID in the hospital. So it, she can be more relaxed that when she comes, there'll be very, 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 very minimal COVID patients. And wherever she goes, it will be only non-COVID patients. So she'll have a very healthy delivery. So tell her not to worry. Yeah, so we are done with the questions. I enjoyed this interactive session with all of you. And that's all from me. I'm signing off, Dr. Kavita Krishna.
आप सभी जानते हैं हम आ, सभी कोविड के दूसरी लहर के साथ जूझ रहे हैं अभी इस समय हम सभी सभी के मन में कुछ ना कुछ प्रश्न उपस्थित होते रहते हैं तो हमने इन प्रश्नों के उत्तर देने के लिए एक श्रृंखला शुरू की है जिसका नाम है कोविड की कोडेड तो इसी श्रृंखला में जो मुझे आज चर्चा का विषय मिला है जो कि आजकल सभी की जुबान पे अगर देखा जाए तो हर कोई हर एक दूसरे से पूछ रहा है वैक्सीन लिया या नहीं वैक्सीन लेने के बाद क्या हुआ वैक्सीन मिला या नहीं वैक्सीन लेना है या नहीं तो ये आज मेरा चर्चा का विषय है तो शुरू करते हैं आज की चर्चा कोविड डी को सीरीज में वैक्सीन बिफोर एंड आफ्टर केयर तो जैसे ही आप मुझे प्रश्न भेजना शुरू करेंगे मैं उनके उत्तर देते जाऊंगा तो शुरू में कुछ क्वेश्चंस जो है हमारी टीम ने दिए हैं मुझे तो हम लोग उससे शुरुआत करेंगे कि आखिर वैक्सीन होते क्या है एग्जैक्टली राइट दोस्तों हमारी शरीर में दो तरह की प्रतिकार शक्ति बनी हुई होती है एक होती है एक्टिव और दूसरी होती है पैसिव एक्टिव यानी कि आपकी जो खुद की इम्यूनिटी जैसे कि आपके सेल्स का फंक्शन ठीक है या नहीं आपके शरीर के सभी अंग सभी ऑर्गन ठीक से वर्क कर रहे हैं या नहीं इसे हम लोग एक्टिव इम्यूनिटी बोलते हैं और दूसरी होती है पैसिव जो कि आपको एक्वायर करते हैं आप जैसे कि आपके शरीर की डेवलपमेंट होती है बचपन से लेके अभी तक हर वक्त जो आप दूसरे वायरसेस जो आपके ऊपर अटैक करते हैं जो भी जर्म्स अटैक करते हैं उनके ऊपर आपके बॉडी के सेल्स जो है वो खुद होके एक मैकेनिज्म बना देते हैं जो कि नेक्स्ट एक्सपोजर के ऊपर नेक्स्ट एक्सपोजर के बाद अच्छे से उसके अगेंस्ट लड़ पाते हैं इसे बोलते हैं पैसे में हम सभी ने बचपन से आज तक बहुत सारे वैक्सीन लिए हुए हैं आपने आपके जिनके घर में छोटे बच्चे हैं वो जानते होंगे कि उन्होंने उनके छोटे बच्चों का टीकाकरण किया हुआ है तो ये वो प्रकार के डिसीजेज होते हैं ये वो प्रकार की बीमारियां होती हैं जिनकी इम्यूनिटी लाइफ लॉन्ग बनती रहती है इसलिए हम लोग उसे बचपन में दे देते हैं बचपन में अगर वो इन्फेक्शन हुए तो वो कभी कभी जानलेवा साबित होते हैं इसलिए हमें सभी प्रकार के टीकाकरण जो है छोटे बच्चों के करने देते हैं अभी आज की डेट में जो कि कोविड वैक्सीन की वजह से कोविड इन्फेक्शन की वजह से कोविड पैंडेमिक की वजह से पूरी ह्यूमैनिटी पूरी जो पूरा विश्व है वो एक तरह से वैक्सीन की तरफ खुश हुआ है कि किसी भी कोई भी उम्र का हो उन्होंने उनको आज ही वैक्सीन लेना जरूरी है हालांकि 18 साल के नीचे लोगों के लिए अठारह साल उम्र जो है उनसे कम उम्र वाले लोगों के लिए फिलहाल वैक्सीन रिकमेंडेड नहीं है वैक्सीन का कंसेप्ट जो है वो और अच्छी तरह से मैं इस तरह से समझा पाऊंगा कि अगर कोई एक क्रिकेट मैच है और आपको उस मैच में परफॉर्म करना है तो उसके पहले आप नेट प्रैक्टिस करते हैं क्रिकेटर जो है वो नेट प्रैक्टिस करते हैं तो एक तरह से ये वैक्सीन देना मतलब आपके बॉडी के सेल्स को नेट प्रैक्टिस देना होता है और जैसे कि आप जानते हैं कि जो अच्छे से ट्रेन होगा नेट में वो अच्छे से खेलेगा एक्चुअल मैच में तो ये कंसेप्ट होता है हमारा वैक्सीनेशन का ऐसे भी कहा जाता है मोर यू स्वेट 
कि प्रैक्टिस लेस यू ब्लीड इन वॉट तो जो है आपका शरीर जो है आपके सेल जो डिफेंस मैकेनिज्म है वो वैक्सीन वाले वायरस के ऊपर प्रैक्टिस कर लेगी और अगर गलती से वाइल्ड वायरस यानी कि बाहर का एक्चुअल डिसीज कॉजिंग यानी कि जो बीमारी पैदा करने वाला वायरस है वो जब शरीर में आ जाएगा तो उसके साथ आपका डिफेंस मैकेनिज्म अच्छे से लड़ पाएगा ये है किसी भी वैक्सीन का मैकेनिज्म तो इसीलिए हम सभी ने वैक्सीनेट होना बहुत जरूरी है ये है आज के हमारे इस चर्चा की बॉटम लाइन जो कि मैं शुरू में ही बता रहा हूं तो लीजिए हम आगे का प्रश्न लेते हैं कि एक सीधा सीधा सवाल पूछा है विच वैक्सीन इज बेस्ट अभी इसी विषय पर मैं थोड़ा आगे भी बताना चाहूंगा कि एज फार एज बेस्ट इज कंसिडर्ड दोनों वैक्सीन जो है फिलहाल भारत में जो अवेलेबल है वो है कोविशील्ड और कोवैक्सीन राइट अब देखते हैं इनमें अंतर क्या है इसमें फर्स्ट डिफरेंस तो आप सभी को पता है मैन्युफैक्चरर कोविशील्ड जो वैक्सीन है वो मैन्युफैक्चर हुई है आ, हमारे पूना में सीरम इंस्टीट्यूट में और कोवैक्सीन जो है वो बनी है भारत सीरम से दूसरा इसमें जो मैकेनिज्म यूज हुआ है उसमें थोड़ा डिफरेंस है बट अगर आप ये देखेंगे कि इनके बारे में जो रिसर्च किया हुआ है इनके जो ट्रायल्स हुए हैं वो दोनों लगभग सेम रिजल्ट दे रहे हैं तो इसलिए अगर आप पूछेंगे कि दो में से बेहतर कौन तो इस प्रश्न का उत्तर कोई नहीं बता पाएगा दोनों लगभग सेम इफिकसी के हैं इसलिए आपको जैसे भी जो जो भी वैक्सीन उपलब्ध हो वो आप ले लीजिए ठीक है और यस नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज कोविड वैक्सीन लॉन्ग टर्म साइड इफेक्ट देखिए अगर किसी भी वैक्सीन के साइड इफेक्ट अगर हो इमीडिएट बेसिस पे तो वो विड्रॉ हो जाएगा वैसे ही ट्रायल में से तो अगर ये कुछ ट्रायल के बाद अगर लार्ज स्केल यूज के ऊपर अगर इसे रिकमेंड किया है इसका मतलब ये है कि ये काफी ज्यादा सेफ है ये डोंट वरी गो एड एंड टेक योर वैक्सीन जहां तक साइड इफेक्ट का सवाल है मैं इसको दो इसमें वर्गीकृत करना चाहूंगा एक है इमीडिएट साइड इफेक्ट और दूसरा है लॉन्ग टर्म साइड इफेक्ट जैसे कि पूछा गया है और तो लॉन्ग टर्म साइड इफेक्ट तो इमीडिएट साइड इफेक्ट्स होते हैं क्योंकि लोकल इरिटेशन लोकल पेन जैसे ही आपको दिया जाएगा इंट्रामस्कुलर तो थोड़ा शाम तक उसमें दर्द होगा बट दैट इज ओके कोई भी इंट्रामस्कुलर इंजेक्शन थोड़ा तो दर्द करेगा इसके बाद आता है थोड़ा सा फीवर कुछ लोगों को आ सकता है नहीं बुखार तो ये भी आ, काफी स्वाभाविक है क्योंकि आपका मैकेनिज्म जो है डिफेंस मैकेनिज्म उस आ, जो भी वायरस आपको इनोकुलेट किया गया है जो भी इंट्रामस्कुलर भी एनएस के स्नायु के अंदर वायरस दिया गया है उसके विरुद्ध लड़ना शुरू कर देती है आपकी मैकेनिज्म और इस वजह से थोड़ा फीवर आना ऑब्वियस है स्वाभाविक है तो इससे डरे नहीं इसके ऊपर आप सिर्फ पैरासिटामोल 500 मिलीग्राम का एक टैबलेट ले सकते हैं जैसे भी जरूरत पड़े हर छह घंटे में आप ले सकते हैं ज्यादा से ज्यादा जो है इमीडिएट साइड इफेक्ट इसे बोला जाता है वो 24 घंटों तक रहते हैं उसके बाद मेजोरिटी ऑफ द पीपल मेजोरिटी ऑफ द वैक्सीन बेनिफिशियरी दे गेट बेटर तो इसलिए घबराइए नहीं इमीडिएट साइड इफेक्ट काफी माइल्ड है और वो भी ऑब्वियस है बहुत तो में आपने देखा होगा कि जो बच्चों में लसीकरण होता है बच्चों में टीकाकरण होता है उसमें पर्टिकुलरली डीपीटी डिप्टेरिया पर्टोसिस वैक्सीन जब बच्चों को लगती है तब वो वैक्सीन से भी बुखार आता है बदन दर्द होता है छोटे बच्चों को वो चिड़चिड़े हो जाते हैं बट आपके पीडियाट्रिशियन उनको एक पैरासीटामोल का ड्रॉप देते हैं तो उससे बच्चे ठीक हो जाते हैं तो ये ऐसा कुछ नहीं है जो कि इसी वैक्सीन में है ये लगभग सभी वैक्सीन पे पाया जाता है और मैं तो यहां तक कहूंगा कि ये हम सभी इसमें से जा चुके हैं बचपन में हमें अफकोर्स हमें याद नहीं होता बट अगर आप अभी पेरेंट हैं ऑन गोइंग छोटे बच्चों के तो आपने खुद ने एक्सपीरियंस किया होगा 
तो ये कुछ नई बात नहीं है इससे डरिए नहीं थोड़ा बहुत बुखार थोड़ा बहुत बदल दर्द होगा ज्यादा से ज्यादा चौबीस घंटे अगर उसके बाद आपका फीवर चालू रहता है जारी रहता है तो आ, लेकिन आप इसमें यह ध्यान में रखना है कि अगर आपका फीवर अड़तालीस घंटों के बाद भी है आपको बदल दर्द भी है तो शायद आप किसी और वजह से इन्फेक्ट हुए हैं या फिर आप कोविड इन्फेक्शन कैरी कर रहे हैं एक्टिव बिफोर वैक्सीनेशन आप लोगों के शरीर में वायरस जा चुका है और उसकी वजह से आपको बुखार आ सकता है तो आपके नजदीकी फिजिशियन जो भी है आपके फैमिली डॉक्टर जो है वो संपर्क करें और इसमें से डिफ्रेंशिएट कर ले कि ये एक्टिव इन्फेक्शन है या फिर वैक्सीन की वजह से और अगर लॉन्ग टर्म साइड इफेक्ट की बात करें तो लॉन्ग टर्म साइड इफेक्ट अब तक तो एक भी डॉक्यूमेंटेड नहीं है और वैसे भी जब बच्चों में टीकाकरण होता है एंटी जो पर्टिकुलरली वायरल डिजीजेस के आगे वायरल बीमारियों के आगे तो जैसे कि आप जब सभी जानते हैं कि यूनिवर्सल जो वैक्सीनेशन प्रोग्राम है इंडिया का काफी सक्सेसफुली काफी सालों से चल रहा है और हम सभी इंडियन काफी ज्यादा स्वस्थ है इसमें से जो भी कॉमन डिजीजेस लगभग बीस पच्चीस साल पहले रहते थे उतने नहीं है तो और विदाउट एनी साइड इफेक्ट तो इसे निश्चिंत रहे ये भी वैक्सीन लॉन्ग टर्म साइड इफेक्ट नहीं देगा आगे का प्रश्न लेते हैं व्हाट इज द प्रोसीजर फॉर वैक्सीनेशन तो प्रोसीजर हम सभी को पता है कि जो आरोग्य सेतु ऐप है उसमें सभी इसके डिटेल्स उपलब्ध है भारत सरकार ने जो अवेलेबल करा के दिया है उसमें से आपको रजिस्ट्रेशन करना है उसके बाद आपको अपॉइंटमेंट स्लॉट बुक करना है और उसके हिसाब से आपको आपके लिए हुए दिन आपके चूज किए हुए आपने जो निश्चित किया है उस सेंटर पर आपको वैक्सीन मिलता है और अगर मैं दूसरी एंड से आपको बताऊं क्या क्या होता है प्रोसीजर तो जो भी आपका वैक्सीनेशन सेंटर है वो जहां से भी एक्वायर करते हैं वैक्सीन तो एक कंटेनर में लाया जाता है जिसे आइस पैकिंग रहता है जो व्हीकल होता है उसे ऑटोमेटिक उसमें सिस्टम होती है जो कि कोल्ड चेन मेंटेन करता है उसका जो टेम्परेचर है टू टू एट डिग्री सेल्सियस होता है टू से नीचे फ्रीजिंग पॉइंट आता है तो इसलिए टू से नीचे नहीं होता और आठ के आगे एट डिग्री सेल्सियस के आगे वो डिनेचुर हो जाएगा इनफेक्टिव हो जाएगा तो आठ के ऊपर नहीं जाने देते उसके बाद उसे वैक्सीनेशन सेंटर में स्टोर किया जाता है कोल्ड स्टोरेज में कोल्ड स्टोरेज इक्विपमेंट वहां से जो वायल्स हैं वो वायल्स जहां पे एक्चुअल पिकिंग होता है वहां पे थ्री एट ए टाइम लाए जाते हैं ओनली थ्री वायल्स आर टेकन आउट ऑफ दैट बॉक्स इन कोल्ड चेन बॉक्स अनदर स्मॉल बॉक्स उसमें लेके एक्चुअल जो साइट है पिकिंग की वहां पे रखे जाते हैं और एक वायल में दस डोज होते हैं यानी दस पेशेंट को पिक होता है और जब पेशेंट आते हैं तब उनके क्रेडेंशियल चेकिंग उनका आई कार्ड चेकिंग और उनका पेमेंट अगर पेड वैक्सीन अगर हो तो उनका पेमेंट और ये प्रोसीजर तो सब कुछ पहले ही हो चुका रहता है प्रिकिंग की प्रोसीजर काफी छोटी है तो दो या तीन मिनट में एक प्रिक हो जाता है इसलिए जो भी कोल्ड बॉक्स में से एक वैक्सीन निकाला होता है वो ज्यादा से ज्यादा थर्टी मिनट्स में वो वायरल कंप्लीट हो जाता है तो इसलिए ये भी डर नहीं है कि कोल्ड चेन ब्रेकिंग का जब भी दो पेशेंट के बीच में जो वायल रखा जाता है एक्स पेशेंट वेट करने तक वो वायल दो आइस पैक के बीच में रखा जाता है आइस पैक के ऊपर नहीं रखा जाता क्योंकि आइस पैक इज जीरो डिग्री बिकॉज इट इज आइस अगर उसके ऊपर रखा दे गया तो वो फ्रीज हो सकता है इसलिए दो आइस पैक के बीच में रखा जाता है एक क्लॉथ के ऊपर और ये जो आ, इसका जो ट्रेनिंग है इट इज एक्सटेंसिवली ट्रेंड जो है वैक्सीनेटर्स है वो किया जाता है इसलिए उस बारे में भी आप निश्चिंत रहिए ये प्रोसीजर भी अच्छे से होती है इसके बाद चलेंगे एक बहुत ही इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन जो कि हम ऑलमोस्ट डेली रोज केस में कम से कम दस या बारह पेशेंट्स को हम लोग ये चीज बता रहे हैं When should I take a vaccine after recovery? Recovery means recovery from COVID infection. 
राइट तो रिकवरी के बाद अगर आपको कोविड इन्फेक्शन हुआ है और तब आपने एक भी वैक्सीन नहीं लिया हुआ और अभी आपको वैक्सीन लेना है तो इसमें अभी फिलहाल जो भी रिकमेंडेशन है आईसीएमआर गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया एंड वेरियस डॉक्टर्स बॉडीज उन्होंने रिकमेंड किया है थ्री मंथ्स नाइन्टी डेज सिक्सटी टू नाइन्टी डेज आई वुड से और ये कब से आपको गिनना है कब से लेके नाइन्टी डेज तो इट इज कंप्लीशन ऑफ योर एक्यूट फेज अब एक्यूट फेज मतलब क्या अगर आप कोविड से इन्फेक्ट हुए हैं आपको कुछ लक्षण आएंगे जब आपके लक्षण पीक पे हो यानी कि एकदम मैक्सिमम लेवल पे जब आपके लक्षण होते हैं उसे कहा जाता है एक्यूट फेज और जब वो फेज कम होते जाते हैं जैसे आपका फीवर बुखार उतरना कम हो जाएगा खांसी थोड़ी बहुत कम हो जाएगी उसे हम लोग बोलते हैं कंप्लीशन ऑफ एक्यूट फेज उससे लेके आपको लेना है अभी के सिक्सटी टू नाइन्टी डेज अभी इसमें एक और थोड़ा सा प्रॉब्लम आता है कि सिक्सटी डेज नाइन्टी डेज मतलब उसी दिन पर लेना है क्या तो जरूरी नहीं क्योंकि इसमें थोड़ा टेक्निकल इशू ये भी आता है कि आपको वैक्सीन अवेलेबिलिटी आपका जो वैक्सीनेशन सेंटर का स्लॉट है उसका बुकिंग ये सारी चीजें भी इसमें हमें ख्याल रखना पड़ता है इसलिए जो प्रोटोकॉल जो है वो स्ट्रिक्ट इस तरह से नहीं है कि आपको उसी दिन लेना है लेकिन आपको एक 60 डेज का स्पैन आपके एक्यूट फेज से लेकर देना है छोड़ना है क्योंकि एक्यूट इन्फेक्शन के एक्यूट फेज में जो भी एंटीबॉडीज आपका शरीर खुद बनाएगा वो एंटीबॉडीज आने वाले वैक्सीन के वायरस को डिस्ट्रॉय कर सकते तो इसलिए आपको पहले आपकी जो ओन इम्यूनिटी है वो अगर जब कम होना एक्सपेक्टेड है उसके बाद आपने वहां वैक्सीन लेना जरूरी है तो उस वक्त आपने यानी 60 डेज के बाद 60 डेज फ्रॉम योर एक्टिव फेज अगर आप खुद ये जज नहीं कर पा रहे हैं कि आप इन्फेक्टेड थे और कब मेरा एक्यूट फेज खत्म हुआ है तो जो भी डॉक्टर ने आपको ट्रीट किया है उस दरम्यान आपके एक्टिव कोविड के दरम्यान उस डॉक्टर से मिलकर उन फिजिशियन से मिलकर आप ये क्लियर कर लीजिए कि कौन सी तारीख के बाद आपको वैक्सीन लगाना जरूरी है इसके बाद अगला प्रश्न जो अक्सर पूछा जाता है व्हाट केयर टू बी टेकन पोस्ट वैक्सीनेशन जैसे मुझे जैसे मैंने शुरू में बताया कि आपको शुरू के 24 घंटों में थोड़ा बुखार आ सकता है थोड़ा बदल दर्द आ सकता है तो आप सिंपल पैरासिटामॉल फाइव हंड्रेड मिलीग्राम लेना है और उससे भी ज्यादा मैं एक इम्पोर्टेंट चीज बहुत ही ज्यादा इम्फेसाइज करना चाहूंगा कि क्या पोस्ट ऑफ वैक्सीनेशन के बाद क्या केयर करना चाहिए वैक्सीन का फर्स्ट डोज को या सेकंड डोज भी अगर आपको मिल गया तो भी कम से कम दो हफ्तों तक आपको इम्यूनिटी पूरी तरह से नहीं बनती तो इसलिए आपको मास्क और सोशल डिस्टेंसिंग करते रहना है इसका एक और भी कारण है जैसे कि अगर आपको इम्यूनिटी मिल गई दोनों आपके वैक्सीन के डोजेस हो गए आपको प्रतिकार शक्ति इम्यूनिटी कोविड के अगेंस्ट मिल भी गई तो भी अगर आपके नेजल सरफेस के ऊपर थ्रोट के ऊपर अगर वायरस आया आपने बिना मास्क आप में पेशेंट को मिले किसी से आपको वायरस मिल गया तो उसकी तकलीफ आपको नहीं होगी बिकॉज यू हैव इम्यूनिटी आपके पास प्रतिकार शक्ति है इसलिए जो वायरस है वो आपको बीमारी नहीं कराएगा बट वो वहां पे रेप्लीकेट होके नंबर्स में बढ़ सकता है आपके म्यूक्यूजा के ऊपर और जब भी आप बिना मास्क किसी और से मिलेंगे जिसके पास वो इम्यूनिटी नहीं है तो आप वो वायरस उसे दे सकते हैं इसे कहा जाता है कैरियर असिम्टोमेटिक कैरियर तो इसलिए अगर आपने वैक्सीन लिया है आपके पास अच्छी इम्यूनिटी भी है फिर भी आपने मास्क और सोशल डिस्टेंसिंग करना जरूरी है इस कारण की वजह से क्योंकि आप कैरियर हो सकते हैं आप एक से लेके वायरस दूसरे को दे सकते हैं आपको कोई पता भी नहीं पड़ चलेगा कि आपके नाक मुंह में आपने वायरस को कैरी किया तो इसलिए जब तक 
सभी लोग अच्छे से इम्यून ना हो जाए तब तक मास्क और सोशल डिस्टेंसिंग का इम्पोर्टेंस कम नहीं होगा प्रॉपर यूज ऑफ मास्क प्रॉपर यूज ऑफ सोशल डिस्टेंसिंग एंड हैंड सैनिटाइजेशन ये तीन जो है जो कि हम लोग साल भर से हम लोग हम सभी कर रहे हैं वो हमें वैक्सीनेशन के बाद भी करना जरूरी है ऑडियो ठीक है ऑडियो ठीक है जेनेटिक मटेरियल ऑफ कोविड वैक्सीन अभी इसे ओनली एम आर एन ए क्यों कहा जाता है क्योंकि कोविड का जो वायरस होता है उसका सिर्फ जेनेटिक मटेरियल लिया एमआरएनए उसको दूसरे एक एडिनो वायरस में फिट किया एनवलप एनवलप ऑफ एडिनो वायरस टेकिंग दी आरएनए ऑफ द कोविड वायरस और उसे फिट किया और उस स्ट्रक्चर को आइडियली इनएक्टिव माना जाता है क्योंकि जो ओवरलाइन कोटिंग ऑफ वायरस कोविड वायरस है वो कोट वहां पे नहीं है इसलिए इट इज नॉन पैथोजेनिक कंट्रोल्ड वायरस इट इज नॉट अ वाइल्ड वायरस और उसे कहा जाता है एमआरएनए वैक्सीन द जेनेटिक मटेरियल ऑफ कोरोना वायरस फिटेड इनटू अनदर कॉमन एडिनो वायरस जो कि प्रॉब्लमेटिक नहीं होता एडिनो वायरस वी ऑल आर गेटिंग ऑलमोस्ट एवरी ईयर वी आर गेटिंग एक्सपोज एंड वी आर इम्यून टूवर्ड्स दैट तो उस एमआरएनए को उसमें फिट करने के बाद जो इनाकुलेट किया जाता है ह्यूमंस में तो इट इंड्यूसेस द आरएनए एंड द एंटीबॉडीज स्टार्ट रिकॉग्नाइजिंग दैट जेनेटिक मटेरियल एंड दे गेट रेडी फॉर एनी फ्यूचर अटैक बाय सिमिलर आरएनए नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन व्हाई इट इज इंपॉर्टेंट टू टेक सेकंड डोज यस व्हाई इट इज इंपॉर्टेंट दैट्स अ वेरी नाइस क्वेश्चन whenever you take first dose there are chances or for that matter second dose there are chances that you are already infected with covid first dose right or aapne shayad active infection ki antibodies aapke sharir mein ho sakti hai right agar aap first dose ke time pe aapke sharir mein 7 din pehle 10 din pehle 2 din pehle आपके शरीर में अगर वायरस आ चुका है तो उसके अगेंस्ट आपकी बॉडी एंटीबॉडीज बनाएगी राइट वो एंटीबॉडीज उस डोज को डिस्ट्रॉय कर सकती है राइट इसलिए सेकंड डोज इंपॉर्टेंट हो जाता है क्योंकि एटलीस्ट एक डोज फर्स्ट डोज हो या सेकंड डोज हो ये एक डोज आपको पूरी तरह नॉर्मल सी में मिलेगा और उसका आपको फायदा होगा क्योंकि बहुत बार कोविड आपके शरीर में जा चुका है ये आपको पता भी नहीं चले तो अगर आप फर्स्ट डोज या फॉर दैट मैटर सेकंड डोज के टाइम पे आप कैरियर हो आपके शरीर पे वायरस हो तो भी एटलीस्ट आपको पहला डोज जो है वो काफी अच्छे से मिला सेकंड डोज दिस इज दिस इज अ प्रैक्टिकल इशू दिस इज अ प्रैक्टिकल इशू दैट एटलीस्ट वन डोज यू आर गेटिंग फ्रेशली दूसरी बात after first dose there are chances that some of the your defenses natural killer cells and t lymphocytes they might not be that acquainted so isliye hame second dose ko uh, lena padta hai so isliye it is kind of a boost second boost whenever there is a rocket a rocket launch there is one rocket which goes up to the first uh, outer space and then there is one booster so it is like that that you reconfirm that the overall immunological memory is created so this is a second dose abhi isi question ko main aage le jana chahunga ki abhi ye jo bhi uh, research chal rahi hai isse aage kuch din baad ye research aa sakti hai because see all of us are new for this our technology is new microbiologists are 
toiling hard day in and day out to take out the the whiskey out of this pipe so we don't know that how long this second dose immunity is going to get on so jab tak hum sabhi mein herd immunity na ban jaye yani ki puri society mein puri humanity mein ek tarah ki immunity na ban jaye taki virus infection ka phailav ruk na jaye tab tak hame ek baat nishchit karni padegi ki agar uske baad samjho ek saal baad the researchers will come up with the results ki immunity wear off ho rahi hai yani ki kam hote ja rahi hai तो शायद हमें एक साल बाद एक एक बूस्टर और लेना पड़ सकता है दिस आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू मिक्स इन दिस टॉपिक बिकॉज दिस इज दिस इज अ स्कोप ऑफ डिफरेंट टॉपिक जैसे ही आएगा विल कम अप विद विल कम अप विद यूट्यूब वीडियो दैट टाइम यू विल बी इन्फॉर्म दैट सी वी हैव टू टेक अनदर बूस्टर डोज आफ्टर वन ईयर अगर तब तक एट वन all of us are vaccinated all of us are gaining good immunity all of us are following good covid appropriate behavior then probably the covid pandemic is going to end and that time probably we may not need the booster dose after one year so for now we will stick to only two doses and the second dose important because it boosts the immunity it boosts the memory it is called immunological memory when can i the next question aaya hai uh sunny raiza when can i donate blood after vaccination so ideally it is a 3 weeks duration jo ki antibodies banne ke liye lagta hai aur uh, uske baad for that matter any inoculation of इन्फेक्टिव मटेरियल अगर आप इसके अलावा और भी कोई वैक्सीन अगर आप लिया है आपने समथिंग लाइक येलो फ्यूर वैक्सीन टिटेनस वैक्सीन उस वक्त भी थ्री वीक के बाद आप ये डोनेट कर सकते नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन कैन वैक्सीन क्योर कोविड परमानेंटली एक क्वेश्चन आया है कैन वैक्सीन क्योर कोविड परमानेंटली see i want to differentiate between the cure and prevention right the question asked is can vaccine cure covid permanently so cure nahi uh vaccine prevents cure covid ke against cure definitely uh, we are using antiviral drugs we are using uh, your own immunity is enough to cure covid most of the times right so Uh, as far as cure is considered, COVID होने के बाद most of the लोग cure होते हैं don't get panic with the COVID. That is the first step against COVID. But as far as vaccination is considered, अगर आपका एक question ऐसा है कि can COVID prevent, can vaccine prevent COVID permanently? तो इसका जवाब अभी फिलहाल मेरे पास या researchers के पास फिलहाल नहीं है बट डेफिनेटली फर्स्ट एंड सेकेंड डोज के बाद नेक्स्ट जो है अगर कोई इंफेक्ट होता है तो वो काफी स्मॉल इंफेक्शन होता है उसमें से काफी अच्छे से पेशेंट बाहर आते हैं इसके बाद कैन आर गेट इंफेक्टेड पोस्ट वैक्सीनेशन वैक्सीन लेने के बाद भी इंफेक्शन हो सकता है वेरी गुड क्वेश्चन क्योंकि इसका बहुत बार मीडिया में चर्चा होती है इसकी बहुत बार पेशेंट भी पूछते हैं इट्स अ हॉट टॉपिक और उसकी वजह से ही थोड़ा सा वैक्सीनेशन की तरफ जो है एक सेट बैक आई वुड से बैठता है जो कि नहीं होना चाहिए वैक्सीन शुड नॉट बी टेकन सो लाइटली कि जो कि आप नहीं देखें ऐसा नहीं है वी शुड नॉट डिमोरलाइज दो आर Taking the vaccine, right? Because vaccine, जो है, वो आपको immunity देगा against the deleterious effects of infection. See, there are two terms. One is infection, and second is disease, right? 
you can get infected but you will not get disease that means बीमारी होना इन्फेक्ट होना यानी कि आपके शरीर के ऊपर वायरस आके गिर गया राइट आपके नोज में है थ्रोट में है दैट कैन हैपन इसके लिए मैं एक सिंपल एग्जांपल देना चाहूंगा एक फर्नीचर है फर्नीचर के ऊपर एक लैमिनेट लगाया हुआ राइट लैमिनेट क्यों लगाया आपने क्योंकि फर्नीचर रस्ट नहीं होना चाहिए अगर उसके ऊपर पानी गिर गया तो।, तो ये जो लैमिनेट लगाया हुआ है ये आपका रस्ट प्रिवेंट करेगा ना कि पानी का गिरना आप ये नहीं बोल सकते कि मैंने जो तो लैमिनेट लगाया ये लैमिनेट गीला कैसे हो गया राइट पानी उसके ऊपर गिर सकता है वैसे ही वायरस आपके शरीर के ऊपर आ सकता है बट वो आपका रस्ट नहीं करेगा यानी आपको डिसीज नहीं करेगा बिकॉज यू आर वैक्सीनेटेड तो ये जो फर्नीचर के ऊपर लैमिनेट लगाया हुआ है दैट इज वैक्सीन अगर आप लैमिनेट के ऊपर गिरा हुआ पानी हाथ में लेके बोलेंगे कि अरे ये कैसे गीला हो गया सो नॉट पॉसिबल पानी गिर सकता है बट आपका फर्नीचर खराब नहीं होगा सो दिस इज दिस लैमिनेट मीन्स वैक्सीनेशन यानी कि आप इम्यून है उसके आगे और हाँ अगर आपको ये चाहिए कि आपको इन्फेक्ट ही नहीं होना है आपके नेजल म्यूकोजा थ्रोट म्यूकोजा पे वायरस आना ही नहीं चाहिए तो वही तो हम लोग साल भर के साथ हैं आप मास्क अच्छे से पहनो तो वह आपके ऊपर वायरस नहीं गिरेगा राइट तो वैक्सीनेशन इज गोइंग टू गिव यू इम्यूनिटी अगेंस्ट द डिसीज और द डिस्कम्फर्ट दैट यू आर गोइंग टू गेट आफ्टर गेटिंग इन्फेक्टेड बट इट इज नॉट गोइंग टू प्रिवेंट यू फ्रॉम कैचिंग द वायरस इन यूर नोज थ्रोट एंड एयरवे फॉर दैट मास्क एंड सोशल डिस्टेंस नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन आया है मिस्टर आर आनंद कृष्ण माय मॉम इज हैविंग यूकोडर्मा एंड वी हैड गॉन टू विद सपोर्ट अदर एवरी ट्रीटमेंट बट नो चेंज इन वाइट पैच नाउ शी इज हैविंग स्किन इंफेक्शन सो इट्स पॉसिबल टू टेक बैक यस द वन वर्ड एक्सप्लेनेशन टुवर्ड्स इज यस शी कैन गो बट जहां पे भाई अपना वैक्सीन लेना है ओवर दैट पार्ट she should not be infected for that matter any pricking anywhere in the body the first line that is given in our textbook in our training is the local area should be infection free wherever we are going to prick or they take any incision or whatever that part should be clean that means should not have infection कि अगर आप बोलेंगे कि सी इज हैविंग स्किन इन्फेक्शन बट मैं आपको थोड़ा ल्यूकोडर्मा के बारे में बताना चाहूंगा एज फार एज ल्यूकोडर्मा इज कंसिडर्ड एंड इफेक्शन इज इन्फेक्टेड देन दैट इन्फेक्शन शुड बी ट्रीटेड विथ प्रॉपर क्वालिटी ड्रेसिंग एंटीबायोटिक्स इज नीडेड एंड यू कैन विजिट यूर डर्मेटोलॉजिस्ट फॉर दैट गेट हर क्यूर्ड फ्रॉम दैट but as far as vaccination is considered there is uh, no such contraindication that she should not receive she should receive only thing ki jo bhi uh, deltoid jo ki deltoid muscle bola jata hai wo area mein jo bhi aap right choose karenge left choose karenge whatever wo choose kijiye jahan pe ki local infection na ho local infection yani jahan pe prick karne wale hain wahan exactly infection nahi hona chahiye नहीं तो वो इंफेक्शन डीप इन साइड जा सकता है इसलिए दैट एरिया एक क्वेश्चन आया है स्वप्नाली दुधे सम पीपल शो डिस्कम्फर्ट फीलिंग आफ्टर गेटिंग वैक्सीनेशन एंड सम डोट दैट्स अ वेरी नाइस क्वेश्चन दैट वाई सम रिएक्ट एंड वाई सम डोंट रिएक्ट सो आई विल गो बैक टू माई प्रीवियस एग्जाम्पल दैट इट इज अ टीम practicing in net which they are preparing for their next day match see some people can get body ache some get injured during net practice itself right so it is like that it is up to your own pre existing immunity how you are going to react towards that virus we all are made up of very different different genetic materials so we never know how you are going to react पर्टिकुलरली ये जो वैक्सीन है जो वैक्सीन जिस 
लेटर में फिट किया हुआ है दूसरे वायरस के मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम जो भी फीवर या फिर बॉडी होता है दैट इज मोर टूवर्ड्स दैट वेक्टर वैक्सीन ना कि कोविड के आगे बेसिकली तो अगर यूजुअल जो हर साल सर्दी खांसी होती है हमें एडिनो वायरस से अगर आप उसके अगेंस्ट थोड़े बहुत प्रीवियसली इम्यून है तो आपकी इम्यूनिटी थोड़ी ब्रिस्कली एक्ट करेगी उस वायरस वेक्टर के अगेंस्ट और उसकी वजह से आपको थोड़ा फीवर बॉडी में ज्यादा आ सकता है और कुछ लोगों को नहीं आता उससे भी आगे जाके मैं बोलूंगा कि इंट्रा मस्कुलर इंजेक्शन प्रिकिंग के बाद प्रिक करने के बाद कुछ लोग जो है वो थोड़ा सा उनको सिंको पर लेके छोड़ यानी चक्कर आना वगैरह ऐसा हो सकता है तो इसलिए जब भी वैक्सीन हो जाता है तो आधा घंटा उन्हें ऑब्जर्वेशन में बिठाया जाता है दैट इज नॉट बिकॉज ऑफ वैक्सीन इट से बट एनी इंट्रा मस्कुलर प्रिकिंग कैन कॉज सिंको पर लेके यानी कि चक्कर आना ऐसा हो सकता है तो इमीडिएटली पोस्ट वैक्सीनेशन इट इज अप टू हाउ यू रिएक्ट टू दैट वैक्सीन कुछ लोगों को प्रिकिंग के दूसरे के प्रिकिंग को देख के ही कभी कभी ग्रीनेस हो जाता है तो आई वुड सजेस्ट कि निश्चिंत होकर जाइए टेंशन मत लीजिए और वैक्सीन ले लीजिए जो वैक्सीनेशन में जो प्रिकिंग की निडल यूज होती है वो होती है ट्वेंटी थ्री वर्ष से लेकर ट्वेंटी सिक्स तक यानी काफी थिन तो इट इज ऑलमोस्ट वेरी लिटिल पेनफुल सो नथिंग टू वरी अबाउट तो अगर आप ऑलरेडी स्ट्रेस्ड अप हैं तो इसमें सिंकोपल एपिसोड आने की संभावना ज्यादा होती है तो डोंट वरी अबाउट इट टू एंड इट नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन आया है मिस्टर राधेश्याम कर इनकी तरफ से माय वाइफ सिक्स मंथ प्रेग्नेंट इन दिस टाइम कैन शी टेक कोविड वैक्सीन नो इट इज प्रेजेंटली प्रेग्नेंट वुमेन को रिकमेंड नहीं किया गया है क्योंकि इनके जो ट्रायल्स होते हैं ऑब्वियसली यू कैन थिंक ये कलेक्टिंग द डाटा इन ट्रायल यूजिंग प्रेग्नेंट लेडी इज एथिकली नॉट पॉसिबल राइट तो इसलिए इसके बारे में जो डाटा कलेक्शन है वो अभी तक नहीं हुआ है इसलिए रिसर्चर्स आई सी एम आर गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया मैन्युफैक्चरर्स डॉक्टर्स वी ऑल हैव स्ट्रिक्टली टोल्ड नॉट टू टेक कोविड वैक्सीन By the pregnant lady, that's very important. Those who are like uh, reaching to the vaccination and they themselves are not actively telling. So the staff, wherever they are picking the patients, where they are vaccinators, they are called as nurses. Who actively every time ask that are you pregnant? And if she says that the lady is pregnant, then The vaccine is strictly contraindicated; should not be taken, and it will it will not be given to that patient. Who should not take the vaccine? Next question I have: Asha Khunen, की तरफ से who should not take the vaccine? So as I say, pregnant ladies should not take the vaccine. This is the first line. Or अभी तक आज तारीख 2 जून 2021 आज के तारीख में फिलहाल 18 से 18 साल की उम्र से नीचे रिकमेंडेड नहीं है तो इन वन वर्ड आई वुड से दोज हु आर प्रेग्नेंट और दोज हु आर हैविंग एज लेस देन 18 इयर्स शुड नॉट टेक वैक्सीन अदर देन देन ऑल शुड गेट वैक्सीनेटेड अब इसमें इसी क्वेश्चन को थोड़ा आगे लेके जाऊंगा इम्यूनो कॉम्प्रोमाइज पेशेंट की तरफ इम्यूनो कॉम्प्रोमाइज यानी कि जिनकी प्रतिकार शक्ति थोड़ी कम है इम्यूनिटी थोड़ी कम है किस वजह से आई उनको कैंसर है एच जैसी बीमारी है या फिर कैंसर की कीमोथेरेपी की वजह से ट्रांजेंटली यानी कुछ समय तक सेवन टू टेन डेज उनकी इम्यूनिटी इंटेंशनली डाउन रखी गई है ट्रांसप्लांट रेसिपियंट्स है यानी कि कोई ऑर्गन ट्रांसप्लांट हुआ है और वो इम्यूनो सप्रेसिव थेरेपी के ऊपर है तब उन पेशेंट्स को मैं ये बताना चाहूंगा कि ऐसे पेशेंट्स ने उनकी इम्यूनोलॉजी की जो स्टेज है वो उनके ब्लड टेस्ट के ऊपर 
जांची जाती है तो जब भी आप वैक्सीनेशन का डिसीजन ले आपके जो भी ऑनकोलॉजिस्ट हैं आपके जो भी हिमेटोलॉजिस्ट हैं उनसे संपर्क करें और उनके प्रिस्क्रिप्शन के बाद ही आप वैक्सीनेशन का डिसीजन लें बट ऐसा बिल्कुल नहीं है कि उन्होंने नहीं लेना चाहिए उन्हें लेना चाहिए बट जो टाइम फ्रेम उनके बारे में डिसाइड करने होती है वो आपके हिमेटोलॉजिस्ट या आपके ऑनकोलॉजिस्ट को डिसाइड कर देते वो आपको ठीक तरीके से गाइड कर सकते हैं कि कौन सी फेज में वो पेशेंट वैक्सीन ले सकते हैं राइट इसके अलावा और एक थोड़ा रेयर डिसीज है बट मैं वो भी यहाँ पे उस विषय को भी स्पर्श करना चाहूंगा हिमोफीलिया हिमोफीलिया ब्लीडिंग डिसऑर्डर इट्स ब्लीडिंग ब्लीडिंग डिसऑर्डर हिमोफीलिया इन पेशेंट्स में कोई भी इंट्रामस्कुलर इंजेक्शन नहीं दिया जाता उनमें अगर इंट्रामस्कुलर इंजेक्शन दिया गया तो उसकी वजह से उनको हिमेटोमा यानी कि मसल के अंदर ब्लीडिंग हो सकता है जो कि काफी ज्यादा हो सकता है उसके बाद उस हिमेटोमा को एक्सट्रैक्शन इंसिजन रिलेज करने की जरूरत पड़ सकती है तो उन लोगों ने खासकर काफी ज्यादा कॉशस रहना है इसमें जो भी आपके हिमेटोलॉजिस्ट है जो भी हिमोफीलिया के पेशेंट्स है उनको ऑलमोस्ट वीकली या वंस इन टू वीक्स फैक्टरेट दिया जाता है यानी कि एक इंजेक्शन होता है जो कि उनके बॉडी में जन्मता कम होता है जेनेटिक डिसऑर्डर की वजह से हिमोफीलिया की वजह से तो वो फैक्टर एड जो उनको दिया जाता है रेगुलर बेसिस पर तो जिस दिन उनका फैक्टर एड का डोज दिया जाना है उसी दिन वैक्सीनेशन का प्लान करें और उस वैक्सीनेशन का प्रिस्क्रिप्शन उसका टाइम फ्रेम डेट टाइम सब आपके जो भी आपके संपर्क में हिमेटोलॉजिस्ट है जो भी हिमोफीलिया आपका जो ट्रीट कर रहे हैं उन डॉक्टर के संपर्क में रहकर उनके प्रिस्क्रिप्शन से आप कीजिए नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन एक दिया गया है वेन कोविड इज गोइंग टू एंड तो विल टेक दिस आफ्टर वर्ड दिस क्वेश्चन वेन कोविड इज गोइंग टू एंड और एक क्वेश्चन आया है स्वप्ना जी गुजे जी से इज द फर्स्ट एंड सेकेंड डोज सेम यस एंड हैज टू बी सेम ये आप हमेशा ख्याल रखिए कि आपने जो भी फर्स्ट डोज दिया है अगर कोविशील्ड या कोवैक्सीन आपको ये पता होना चाहिए कि आपने इलेक्ट्रिक फर्स्ट डोज कौन सा लिया है ताकि आप वही सेकंड डोज लेना है और जहां तक उसकी क्वांटिटी है सवाल है दोनों की क्वांटिटी सेम होती है वन एम एल जो इंट्रामस्कुलर में लिया जाता है उसी साइड पर आप ले सकते हैं कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं तो जो डोजेस होते हैं वो दोनों सेम होते हैं और एक क्वेश्चन आया है ओके वो हो चुका है तनवीर जी का क्वेश्चन मेन कैन आई डोनेट बट ऑलरेडी आंसर ओके नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन तनवीर जी ने पूछा है व्हाई गो को गवर्नमेंट इज फ्लक्चुएटिंग टाइम पीरियड बिटवीन टू डोज टू डोजेस इट इज नॉट अदर फ्लक्चुएटिंग इट इज इंक्रीजिंग डे बाय डे दिस इज जनरली डन एज द डेटा फ्रॉम द रिसर्चेस keep on coming that uh, there are evidences that the, the second booster should be given little later so jaise jaise data aata hai to waise waise thoda guidelines change hote hain rather i would say that is the beauty of modern medicine that uh, if there are any twists and turns generally modern medicine accepts it and corrects it it is not uh, like uh, and was the reason thing that it has to be done and that is decided at once as the researchers provide the data then accordingly that the changes are made in the guideline so that's why the government is changing the duration time frame required between the two doses dr rani dr rani ne pucha hai what about the asthmatic patients steroid medication at vaccination should be continued yes very nice question uh in one word yes uh, they should continue the doses they should go ahead with the vaccination 
एज पर देयर अवेलेबिलिटी तो एस्थमेटिक्स के जो स्टेरॉइड डोजेस होते हैं दे आर वेरी लो दे आर नॉट लाइक इम्यूनोसप्रेसेंट दे आर लाइक एंटी इन्फ्लेमेटरी डोजेस सो दे आर नॉट ऑन ह्यूज मेडिकेशंस फॉर इम्यूनोसप्रेशन जैसे कहा जाता है जैसे कि इम्यूनिटी डाउन करने वाले ड्रग्स उस लेवल तक स्टेरॉइड मेडिसिन नहीं होते एस्थमेटिक पेशेंट्स के सो दे शुड टेक their uh, regular doses of uh, steroids most probably inhaled steroids they are on so they should continue to take their inhaled steroids and they should go ahead with vaccination because they are the prime candidates for vaccination but another thing i would like to quote here is asthmatic ne uh, is pure pandemic mein aisa nahi dekha gaya ki asthmatics ko zyada bhayankar covid hua hai बल्कि जो ऑलरेडी एंटी इन्फ्लेमेटरी ड्रग्स थे, थे जो कि वेल कंट्रोल्ड एस्थमेटिक थे स्पेसिफिकली इनहेलर थेरेपी पे थे दे हैव डन वेल इन द कोविड सो नथिंग टू वरी इवन इफ यू आर एस्थमेटिक कंटिन्यू योर रेगुलर डोजेस गो एंड विद द वैक्सीनेशन नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन आया है मिस्टर सुमित चौहान जी से क्या वैक्सीन लेने से डीएनए मॉडिफाई होता है सो यस दैट्स अ बिग मिक्स I'm, I'm thank you to you, thanks to you that you came up with that subject. DNA, we all have uh, DNA in all of our cells, right? So it is not possible to change the DNA of all your cells throughout the body by any means, right? Forget about this fact. It is not possible to modify your DNA by in any means. so what does this uh, what does this vaccine do right it goes to the thalamic t cells those those regions do you are do you are circulating in your body it attaches to the receptors and those receptors are modified those that cell surface has got receptor that receptor gets modified to catch the virus and now this uh, this uh, cell now next time knows now which protein enters uh, that whenever the new virus protein enters now now that cell knows how to catch that virus protein this is a simple technique that our natural killer cells and whatever t cells are there in your blood in your lymph throughout your body this is how the immunity acts that uh, virus doesn't go inside your uh, uh, dna of any cell so nothing to worry about your dna by modification or like that all these are myths right we all have received vaccinations since childhood and uh, all indians are good in shape there is no modification similar thing uh, has been had been talked about the uh, polio vaccine also that this is in fact oral vaccine but now today you know the the polio uh, incidence the incidence in this number of new polio patient detection has gone down almost to zero and uh, we are almost on the verge of this overall world is going on the verge of getting declared as polio free on top of that similar victory of mankind over a deadly disease called smallpox has been achieved way back so that was also with the smallpox vaccine in fact from the year 1980 all of us uh, the, those uh, the smallpox vaccine has been removed from the regular pediatric vaccination schedule those who are born before 1980 they will have a mark apan marathi madhe tela devi cha devi ki las asa manayto tar tancha davya khandyavar devi cha lasi cha mark disto 1980 cha aadhi tancha birth jhala hai tancha 1980 sal cha kahi janna disto kahi janna disat nahi ani 1980 sal cha nantar jancha birth jhala hai tancha davya khandyavar devi cha lasi cha mark disat nahi karan tya nantar the vaccine bundle hai so that vaccine was withdrawn from 1980 onwards so 
So see the power of this modern medicine and vaccination that we have conquered a deadly disease in past. So we should take motivation from that and we should all get vaccinated. Next question I have, the previous one. मिस्टर मधुर फिरोदिया सर मुझे वैक्सीन लेने के बाद बहुत ज्यादा बुखार आया है क्या करूं ओके सो अगर दिस इज लिटिल इनकंप्लीट इंफॉर्मेशन व्हाट आई कैन गेट इट सो अगर आई वुड से कि 24 घंटे के पहले आपने जस्ट वैक्सीन लिया है और आपको अभी बुखार है ज्यादा डरने की बात नहीं आपके वैक्सीनेशन सेंटर में आपको एक पैरासिटामोल पॉइंटेड मेडिसिन दिया होगा वो आप ले सकते हैं पैरासिटामोल के अलावा और कोई मेडिसिन मत लीजिए जैसे कि डाइक्लोफेनाइक वगैरह वो मत लीजिए पेन किलर शुड बी अवॉइडेड इन पोस्ट वैक्सीनेशन बॉडी एक पोस्ट वैक्सीनेशन बुखार के वक्त डाइक्लोफेनाइक नहीं लेना चाहिए पैरासिटामोल लीजिए लेकिन अगर आपका टाइम फ्रेम चौबीस घंटे से ज्यादा हो रहा है तो आई वुड सजेस्ट कि नजदीकी हॉस्पिटल में जाके एलिटी में जाके एजेंसी वार्ड में जाके या फिर आपके फैमिली फिजिशियन से तुरंत संपर्क करें और एज फार एज ज्यादा बुखार इज कंसिडर्ड कि सी दिस इज वेरी सब्जेक्टिव कि किसी को 100 बुखार भी ज्यादा लग सकता है किसी को 102 भी कुछ नहीं लगेगा राइट इट इज सब्जेक्टिव सो आई वुड सजेस्ट कि आप एग्जैक्टली क्वांटिफाई कीजिए अगर 100 से ज्यादा है तो डेफिनेटली 100 से ज्यादा ओनली वैक्सीनेशन से जनरली नहीं आए तो बेटर टू विजिट योर नियरेस्ट हॉस्पिटल और योर फैमिली फिजिशियन थैंक यू फॉर आस्किंग क्वेश्चन टेक केयर देन नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन अगेन बाय आशा पुणे आशा जी ने पूछा है सर अगर किसी को वैक्सीन के बाद एंटीबॉडीज और कोरोना के एंटीबॉडीज से प्रॉब्लम हो सकता है तो क्या no there is nothing like hyperactive immunity as far as this is considered there are certain diseases known as autoimmune diseases that means your own auto antibodies are killing some of your something like thyroid hypothyroid most of us are like uh, those who are thyroid patient hypothyroid so it's a kind of autoimmunity thyroiditis hota hai khud ke antibodies khud ke thyroid ko destroy karte hai uske baad hypothyroidism hota hai so aisa isme nahi hai there is nothing like hyperactive immunity इट इज जस्ट लाइक कि आपके जो है जो कोरोना की एंटीबॉडीज ऑलरेडी कोरोना वायरस इंफेक्शन की वजह से जो एंटीबॉडी ऑलरेडी एग्जिस्टिंग है वो आपके वैक्सीन वाले कोरोना इंफेक्शन की वजह से जो वायरस अंदर आया है वैक्सीन की वजह से उसके साथ लड़ सकते हैं और वो वैक्सीन को इनएक्टिव कर सकते हैं सो दैट वो इमीजिएटली जब मेमोरी सेल्स बनने से पहले ही उसको इनएक्टिव कर देंगे तो हमें ये नहीं चाहिए हमें चाहिए कि आपका जो वैक्सीन है वो एक लाइव एरिया में जाए ताकि आपके मेमोरी सेल्स अच्छे से बन सके नाइस क्वेश्चन नाइस वेरी टेक्निकल क्वेश्चन मेरी सुजाता जी ने पूछा है डॉक्टर विल दीआरपी लेवल इंक्रीज बाय टेकिंग कोविड वैक्सीन यस इट कैन इंक्रीज ट्रांसजेंटली बिकॉज एनी फीवर एनी रीजन बिहाइंड फीवर कैन इंक्रीज सीआरपी सीआरपी इज अ वेरी सेंसिटिव टेस्ट इट इंक्रीजेस विथ लिटिल ऑफ वायरल इंफेक्शन और इनोकुलेशन फॉर दैट मैटर इंजुरी ओवर योर बॉडी द सीआरपी कैन राइज On top of that, uh, CRP can rise even if you are diabetic and uh, you are having very uncontrolled fever. Uh, your lifestyle is completely wrong. You are not following the really good routine, and so that causes internal injuries, internal injuries to your to your arteries that can increase the CRP. So CRP is a very sensitive test. Why it is used in COVID? That's a different reason because we want to stay upfront. Then the disease itself. हमें जो है वो COVID disease से एक कदम आगे रहना होता है. So इसलिए COVID आपका body में trouble कर सकता है क्या? ये जानने के लिए एक कदम पहले ही जानने के लिए CRP test किया जाता है. But as far as this post COVID is considered, 
तो वो ट्रांसिट भी दो से तीन दिन तक बढ़ेगा बट मेरा ये सजेशन है कि वाई यू आर चेकिंग सीआरपी एट ऑल आफ्टर वैक्सीनेशन अनलेस देर इज सम अदर रीजन फॉर इट अगर आप एक्टिव कोविड इन्फेक्शन में हो अगर ऐसी संभावना है आपके कंडीशन में तो ही आपका सीआरपी चेक किया जाएगा राइट तभी आपका आरटीपीसीआर भी चेक किया जाएगा सो सीआरपी अगर आपके सवाल का स्ट्रेट फॉरवर्ड अगर आंसर चाहिए तो सीआरपी लेवल कैन इंक्रीज आफ्टर कोविड वैक्सीन यस इट कैन इंक्रीज बट माय क्वेश्चन इज इफ इट इज नॉट क्लिनिकली रिलेवेंट दैट मीन्स अगर वो डायग्नोसिस में या फिर आपके ट्रीटमेंट में कुछ इंटरफेयर नहीं कर रहा है तो ऑल ऑफ सडन और जस्ट लाइक दैट वाई आर यू टेकिंग सीआरपी एट ऑल नो नीड तो एक क्वेश्चन है आखिरी का जो मैं जिसको मैं जाते जाते एक सुनना चाहूंगा वेन कोविड इज गोइंग टू एड That's a very big question. All of us are fighting against it. Our researchers, our microbiologists, our government, whole world, whole medical field is trying to find out the uh, answer to this question. Where it is going to end? So, as far as end is considered, microorganism है ये end नहीं होगा और हमें उसके पीछे लगना भी नहीं चाहिए end करने के लिए. What matters is it should not affect us. It is peaceful coexistence. Right, so COVID is here to stay, but it should not bother us. We should be immune towards it. Every year, we get a little bit of disease. There are viruses known as respiratory syncytial virus (RSV), the adenoviruses, but we are not bothered about it because they don't trouble you that much. COVID can trouble you in some patients. That's why we are bothered. That too, it transmits so fast that if the patient number starts rising, it comes like a wave. Why this for the first or second wave? Because if you plot the graph of the number of the patients, it goes like that and then comes down. So that's why it is called as wave. So whenever the number of COVID goes up, it goes so sharp that uh, we get short of medical facilities. So that's why the COVID is bothering us. So what matters is if we protect ourselves from the deleterious effects of COVID. Then uh, there is no matter if COVID stays here, right? There will be uh, one odd patient uh, who will be uh, having sardi khanti, जैसे बोला जाता है कि sardi khanti वाला एक आधा patient रहेगा, हम लोग test करेंगे COVID होगा, we tell him to stay quarantine, he will be fine within four five days, he will complete his quarantine of say around fifteen to seventeen days, and he will get better. So ये situation हर COVID के साथ COVID patient के साथ आनी चाहिए, ये हमारा aim है. ये हमारा उद्देश्य है राइट इसलिए हमें उसकी तरफ इम्यूनिटी की तरफ जाना है राइट सो द क्रक्स ऑफ द दिस टॉपिक इज यू शुड गेट वैक्सीनेटेड और कम से कम 80 परसेंट लोगों ने जब तक वैक्सीनेट नहीं होते या फिर इन्फेक्ट होकर इम्यूनिटी नहीं आती तब तक जो फास्ट ट्रांसमिशन जिसे बोला जाता है या फिर शार्प राइज इन नंबर ऑफ पेशेंट बोला जाता है वो आ, उसको रोकना नामुमकिन है तब तक जब तक कम से कम एटी परसेंट ऑफ द इंडियन पॉपुलेशन और एटी परसेंट ऑफ इंडियन पॉपुलेशन जब हम बोलते हैं जब हम भारत के वन थर्टी एक सौ तीस करोड़ है उसमें से एटी परसेंट मतलब लगभग सौ करोड़ तो जाता है तो अगर हम लोग कल तक राह देखेंगे आने वाले दो साल तक कि हम सौ करोड़ों को इन्फेक्ट होने की राह देखेंगे तो इट इज गोइंग टू बी अट मैन दैट इज गोइंग टू बी वेरी वेरी ट्रेवल कि हम लोग इन्फेक्शन होके एक्टिव इम्यूनिटी के अगर पीछे भागेंगे तो हमें कम से कम सौ करोड़ों को इन्फेक्ट करना पड़ेगा तब जाके हमें इम्यूनिटी मिलेगी इट इज नॉट पॉसिबल इट शुड नॉट हैपन अगर वो हम लोग उसकी हार देखेंगे तो देर विल बी डेंजरस सिचुएशन ऑल ओवर वी विच वी ऑल ऑफ अस है इन्फेक्शन To lead to the unity of whole community, so similar virus in controlled form is known as vaccine. So.
सेम वैक्सीन लेकर आप वो इम्यूनिटी करा सकते हैं सौ करोड़ लोगों में टू स्टॉप द रैपिड स्प्रेड रैपिड लाइजिंग नंबर सो दिस इज द इम्पोर्टेंस ऑफ वैक्सीनेशन सो इस कोविड डिकोडेड प्रोग्राम को देखने के लिए थैंक यू आपसे बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद आपके कुछ भी क्वेश्चन रहेंगे वो चैट बॉक्स में डालते रहेंगे हमारी टीम जो है उसके ऊपर वर्क करेगी जैसे जैसे नए वैक्सीन आएंगे या कुछ नया प्रोटोकॉल आएगा हॉस्पिटल इज कमिटेड टू प्रोवाइड यू द राइट इन्फॉर्मेशन साइंटिफिक इन्फॉर्मेशन तो स्टे इन टच विद अवर सयाजी हॉस्पिटल ऑफिशियल यूट्यूब चैनल ताकि हम लोग आपके क्वेरीज को वीडियो के माध्यम से सॉल्व कर पाएंगे फिलहाल के मुझे इजाजत दीजिए धन्यवाद थैंक यू ते बोलते दुसरे याच्या
good afternoon everyone i am dr pradeep suryawanshi i am the head of department of pediatrics and neonatology of sayadri hospital pune i am working in sayadri since 2013 and i am in the department actually as a pediatrician since 2000 after my pediatrics i did my fellowship in neonatology from 2000 to 2007 in australia so dear friends today we are going to discuss about the most important aspect about the covid and the children we all are worried last almost 15 months we all are struggling we have faced the first wave we have faced the second wave and now there is a lot of discussion going on about the third wave so let's be relaxed don't be too much afraid and get panic about the situation what we are thinking at present moment in the form of this third wave if you see you know so when we were discussing about the first wave and the second wave we were talking about the adult population naturally we never thought about the children at that point most of the time we said that the children have a better protection children have less involvement and that's correct the first wave definitely the involvement was less but in the second wave the children also got affected so dear friends we need to prepare we need to be ready and we should be alert if there is a third wave in the form of a children as the cases the good part about the children and the covid 19 almost 90 to 95% of the children they have asymptomatic in presentation so what is, what do you need to be good about that that okay the children might get infection but they are will not have a major disease around 5 to 10% will have a, a disease pattern with the some symptoms but of that also lot of kids will have a milder form of the disease so what i need to remember as a parent remember it is my protection it is my responsibility to protect my kid the source of infection for children is through the adult the source of infection to the kid is naturally to the another kids which they are playing together these are the two sources currently which we are thinking so what do we need to be worried or we need to be careful still we should continue the rule of sms what is the rule of sms that means continue taking precautions in the form of social distancing no choice to us use the mask remember you need to train your kids kids about 2 kg can have a very good habit of mask so teach your children who is more than 2 years to wear the mask and teach the children in the form of good hand hygiene we have done perfect in the first and second wave we have done fantastic in the last actually 15 months that the kids are protected but if you see the infectivity in the second wave was quite high so what does it mean when we are talking about 
about the infectivity rates we have seen that in the second wave because of the all families are coming positive children also came positive so hence we have to be alert for the next parameter which we are thinking could be feasibility possibility of third wave now a lot of people are asking us about the vaccination in the children currently in india it's about 18 years vaccination sanction as you all know we have we have in the us the sanctions after 12 years the pfizer and moderna are those who are about 12 years hopefully in india also let's see that in the next two months also we will have a vaccination at least for about 10 years that's my thought process when you consider about vaccination and we have written as expert committee to the government of india as the indian economic priority to think about vaccination to the kids also that's a other important point the next point comes when we are thinking about the covid in the children it is not only children the newborns are also getting affected and in that scenario remember that the family members are positive mother is also positive and the newborns are also getting positive the most important rule here is please continue the breastfeeding if the mother is stable if the mother is at home isolation or even the isolation in the hospital she should continue the breastfeeding because the breast milk contains the immunological markers and these immunological markers are important for protection of other diseases so what does it mean that once that you are thinking covid covid but you have to think 100 diseases which breast milk protects and hence breast milk is must for your newborn baby you can safely continue the breastfeeding to the baby by using proper mask by using hand wash and keeping a distance of 6 feet to the baby you can have breastfeeding for the baby the good thing happened in the last month now the lactating mother that means the breastfeeding mother can take the covid vaccine there is no problem about or the contraindication about vaccine to the mother so that is very important aspect when we are talking now when we think about the children's and the presentation what type they present most of the children will present with the fever and they will have some gut problems like vomiting loose motion so remember those are milder form of symptoms like a routine viral infection most of these will settle in probably two to three days so don't be worried these 90 to 95% mild symptom children we can manage at home so what does it mean most of the children we can able to manage in the home isolation and a child who is more than 10 years you can think about isolating but if the child is less than 10 year one of the parent has to take care please don't ask your grandparents to take care of your kid that is very important aspect which i want to tell you because the immunity of the grandparent is naturally low as compared to your immunity so when we have a two members in the family husband and wife the person who has a better immunity that means the person who hasn't have any infection in last five years that's a better person immunity wise he should take care of the kid because if it is four year five year we can't isolate that child so such time the family member who is a better immunity or the person who has taken the vaccine his vaccination to the other is important you all should take the other vaccine just previous 
previous session was vaccination. So you all should take that vaccination, those who are above it in there. That will protect you and that will protect your family. So what I'm trying to tell you that even though we are thinking children as the problems at present moment, we are thinking children as a safe zone and we can isolate them if they are positive. Few children will require admission. That means when your fear is not controlled, when they have some breathing problem, when the children is not eating well, he is not, he is looking very dull, too much loose motion, too many vomiting, he is not eating anything. Those scenarios will be 2 to 5 percent, not more than that. That's the good part of the children. The children respond very fast. The recovery is very fast in children as compared to adults. So don't be worried. Don't be, don't be panic. You need to be in touch with your family doctor or pediatrician who is treating your children, who is guiding you from day one. That development is very, very important. Now remember, one more aspect I want to tell you here before we start discussion. The adult, once they have acute COVID, they are in the acute part. But in the children, there is an entity called as multi-system syndrome. What is this entity? This entity means what? The children got COVID, he got recovered, he went home, or he is already at home isolation and is better. But after two to six weeks, he again develops the fever, he again develops the rash, and, and red eyes, red lips, red tongue, such type of rashes the children develop. So we need to be careful and alert as a parent to monitor these things. And these children, if you treat early, if you take opinion of your pediatrician early, they are also recoverable. So this condition is called as MIS in children, multi-system inflammatory syndrome in children. Again, don't be afraid. We have a treatment, we have a response. And again, I told you that in the COVID-19, the response to the children is very good. Outcome of the children is very good. In the first and second wave, we have treated almost more than 500 children for this COVID-19. We have treated almost 80 patients of this MIS children. And we have treated almost 15 newborn babies with the COVID. And we only lost one baby. So what does it mean? The outcomes in the children is fantastic and we have good facilities available and naturally the children respond very well. Now in the next session we will start with the question answer discussion points. So let's have the discussion open and we will have your questions with the queries so that we can have more questions rather than me talking as the theoretical part. Let's have your questions, let's have your problem, and then go ahead from that discussion. One minute. Can I have water, please? Yeah, we can have a break of two minutes and then we will restart.
So um, let's see the let's see the um, question question from Mr. Praveen Kazbe. Hello, sir. How do we diagnose asymptomatic COVID in the kid? Uh, Mr. Praveen, it's a good point. Remember, if the family members are positive, that means if the father and mother is positive, naturally, we'll have to be careful about the kids. Because most of the time in this scenario, the kids are coming positive. These are the 90% of the cases of asymptomatic. That means those kids between 10 to 18 years, they might not show symptoms. Hence, it is better to do the test in the kids also, so that it becomes easy to find out which family members are positive and which family members are not positive. So, suppose now as an example, suppose now a family, suppose my family, and if I'm a positive, what happens next? As a screening of the family members, I will be doing the screening of all my family members my parents, my partner, and my kid. And in that system, suppose now along with me, my kid is positive. Suppose my partner is negative, my parents are negative. So what happens in that scenario? Ultimately, you know that the people which as the kid, though he is positive, so he needs segregation from other family members. The most important aspect which I want to emphasize here is that the kids spread fast. That means infectivity rates in kids is high. Means from kids, the adult people, that means grandparents get infection very fast. So it is very essential to separate grandparents from the kids. That is most important thing what we need to see. What is important here is that as we know, the immunity part of grandparents has some more grandparents along with the kids. That is what is my most important thing which I would like to tell here. The kids with the fever. Naturally, the currently the kids are at home, so there should not be any reason for fever in the children. So whenever you are thinking there is a fever which is definitely more than 102, that time you need to screen the children. That is very, very important aspect what we are talking as the situation. Suppose you say that we are giving the simple medicine, what we are calling as a paracetamol, which is very helpful. You need to know the dosage of that paracetamol from your family doctor and give that paracetamol every six hourly when you have the fever in that children. So that is what that is what I am trying to say that mainly when we are working as the fever, think about only symptomatic treatment. We don't require too many hypertension. Okay, the next question from uh, Tanvi uh, Raikar. How do we protect our kids from COVID third wave? What precautions do we take? I think this is a very common question now. We all are talking about third wave, media, hospitals, parents, everybody so. Now, what is the most important thing in the third wave? It is the protection of the kids by us. That means I have to take my precaution. Because source of infection is the family member. Suppose I'm working, that means I'm the source of infection. For my means I have to take precautions more. What does precaution more? Proper mask, hand wash, social distancing. I have to do. The kids also, also they have to take all these things.
sorry about the mic issues i'll repeat the question how do we protect our kids from covid third wave what precautions do we take i will uh, say that the source of infection of the covid to the children is from the family that means the source of infection is myself or my family members to the children hence i should take more precaution as sms i should be taking vaccine myself these two important things is must and the for children they should you should educate any children who is more than 2 years they should wear the mask so we need to develop habit of wearing mask for the children that is very very important and once probably within 1 to 2 months we will have vaccine for the children that time also we are thinking about vaccination for children so these are the steps i am going to take when we are thinking about protection about the children from the third wave naturally what we are thinking at present moment the third wave is a possibility it might happen it might not happen so we should be prepared so what we should prepare now suppose the cases have controlled little bit we should not immediately allow the children to go to the park immediately allow them currently still home isolation and even though sometimes if you are going out always use the mask social distancing hand wash that's mandatory the next question is from uh, mr uh, sahani what about influenza vox vaccine is it a precautionary measure against covid very good question again what is influenza vaccine i'll, I'll tell you first important thing every year before rainy season in india we have influenza related diseases in the form of babies having fever running nose cough cold breathing problems developing pneumonia so the influenza presentation and covid presentation is same hence we are recommending influenza vaccine to the children especially when they are less than 10 years and especially less than 5 years for 5 years we always recommend that means we are already giving a before rainy season every children influenza vaccine what is advantage of giving this influenza vaccine suppose the children has taken influenza vaccine suppose the children has taken in the month of june influenza and the children has again fever and cough and cold in the month of july then the cause of influenza is not there that means we need to find out other causes so it is easy for pediatrician that this is not influenza this is related to other viral infection most likely what we are talking covid infection hence influenza vaccination before 5 years is definitely we are giving every year in the month of may june july we give influenza the influenza vaccine comes every 6 monthly with the new strains that means you get in november december one influenza and may june one influenza so i would say that influenza before 5 years is mandatory those kids before 10 for more protection you should give the influenza vaccination the next question from uh, devika hi doctor are there any preventive vaccination that can be taken for kids before 5 years naturally you need to take all your vaccination recommended by indian academy of pediatrics so what are these vaccination we recommend we recommend triple we recommend flu at 6 months and 7 months measles mumps and go that is the rubella at 9 months if your kid has not taken the bcg and mmr i will recommend please take that bcg and mmr if they have taken one mmr i will recommend two doses of mmr and i would also recommend the influenza that is a flu vaccine for your kid that is before 5 years naturally your kid has taken vaccine at 18 months which is booster and 5 years which is booster so i will repeat again 
the bcg has shown some protectivity against the covid in some literature mmr has shown the protectivity against the against the covid hence bcg and mmr i would definitely recommend i just mention that you should take the influenza because the influenza related influenza also is one of the issues related to morbidity which will not happen hence that also is very important so these three vaccines are must that is one is bcg second is mmr and third is influenza um the next question is from akshata hi sir pneumococcal vaccine help to prevent covid no that is a wrong statement akshata the pneumococcal vaccine is for prevention of pneumonia because of the bacterial infection because of the bacterial pneumonia covid leads to viral pneumonia suppose i have suffering from covid then there is a risk of bacterial infection also in the icus that time these pneumococcal vaccine helps for the children pneumococcal vaccine we say it is very useful before 2 years because pneumonia is also one of the leading cause of death in india so pneumococcal vaccine doesn't prevent covid pneumococcal vaccine is prevention for bacterial pneumonia which is also associated in some of the covid babies who are very sick who are on ventilator that time that bacterial infection becomes added factor hence pneumococcal vaccine is useful for these children to protect from pneumococci these pneumococci are bacteria so remember currently the covid vaccine which is available in india is not recommended for less than 18 years but it will eventually will come that means in 1 to 2 months it is going to come so that is what i am trying to say you so remember this is most important um next question is from mr rohit joglekar how to take care of a child if he is detected with covid 19 very important question and very practical question now i will make the two categories of the child here one category is the children less than 10 years and the second category children more than 10 years now let's see the children who is more than 10 years i think most of them by and large they are okay with isolation so you if the children has only fever and your doctor has suggested home isolation as a symptomatic treatment most of the children i told you they don't require too many medicines we are happy with simple fever reducing medicine like a paracetamol and we are happy with some form of zinc and vitamins to improve and maintain the immunity that much medicines we are happy so you need to teach the your children isolation with how to take temperature and how to take saturation this two things you need to teach your child who is more than 10 years he can be isolated with the father or mother who is more immune taking care that means giving food giving fruits juices what are the things he requires in the room you should provide to him you should ask him to spend his time with indoor games reading the story books discussion with you in the form of i believe myself in ramayan mahabharata continue that discussion of ramayan mahabharata and story writing story telling drawing these things you should indulge those 14 days now let's see the second part that is the child who is the child who is less than 10 years here isolation becomes difficult so remember first isolate the good members of the family that means those who are covid negative separate them or the person suppose my child is positive i will be taking myself as a member who is immunity is better i have taken vaccine so i will be taking care of my son which i did that means providing the food and with staying with him because he can't stay alone 
so i will be using the mass he will be also using the mass if feasible and i will be using a lot of hand wash good diet good again the diversion or involvement of this kid into the activities and reducing the screen time one of the important thing for the child less than 10 years reduce the screen time not more than 2 hours in a day hence i'll be involving in good sleep good diet and physical more here and there and just monitoring temperature and saturation and breathing things which i usually as a doctor we teach the parents how to take temperature just putting a probe and machine there which you all did very good in the covid saturation monitoring always you want about 95 in children and breathing pattern if the child is naturally the less than 10 above one year you want around 30 respiratory rate you don't want more than 30 also and the child less than one year you don't want above 40 child who is newborn we don't want above 50 these are the doctors will suggest you so we have to take care of that if your child is a newborn i told you 0 days to 20 years days then mother with the mass will continue the breastfeeding now the next question from mr manish is there any special food which can boost immunity of kids to avoid covid manish very again good question routine question we all want immunity to our kids what is a good good diet to us is balanced diet high protein diet that means we will be giving if you are having the eggs naturally the dals you will be able to have more of the paneers that's a protein part will be there in daily diet you will try to increase the a quantity of side by side balanced things that means i'll be taking the milk the fruits and juices and vegetables this is the good for immunity there is no special thing but i will avoid junk foods that's very important thing i will do the good thing happened in the last 15 months you can see the chil children are actually in good position they are they are not sick why they are not sick why the children are in good shape in the last 15 months we are not eating outside food we are not drinking outside water we are washing hands these are the common things for flu for dengue malaria typhoid hepatitis when you have a bad food when you have a bad water these are the sources of the infection so continue that good habit so i would say high protein diet with naturally associated balanced diet in the form of the routine home diet is fantastic suppose now kids wants pizza once in one month that is acceptable you can't say i will eat pizza on daily basis but the kid is insisting you that daddy i want the pizza i have not ate up to in last two months then it is acceptable so junk food means what you can't be giving those foods or chocolates and the your uh, the cakes on daily basis it should be some interval so that you can balance those things the next question uh, from priyanka patil how long do antibodies last in the body after covid 19 infection in babies particularly particularly 6 month old okay see currently the covid infection what the research has shown is the antibodies will remain mostly 3 to 6 months but the some of the research in the children in the last year may which has shown that they have seen the antibodies in the current may also so what we is currently recommending is that the person who has the person who has covid 19 infection should wait for 3 months for vaccination then he should take vaccine the vaccine will add the antibodies suppose your child is 6 months that means he has uh, antibodies at present moment which is okay at present moment so let's wait for the vaccination about the kids which might start in the next 1 to 2 months that could be uh, feasible the next question is from uh, rasika jede um hello doctor 
um, Rasika Adiwal here. I was affected with COVID in September 2020, and now I am six months pregnant with second baby. Is there any possibility that my unborn baby will have antibodies in this body? Fantastic question, Rasika. Now remember, the first that is September 2020, most likely the antibodies were in the low grade and you are safe to have this baby. They don't cross to the baby those old antibodies. So now you are, you are talking about the month of June. So what we are talking is now near about nine months is over. So I would say it is a very safe, safe pregnancy. Take basic precautions of pregnancy. You are on the safe zone when we consider about this pregnancy and you take all precautions what you are already doing as SMS and diet and basic exercise of your pregnancy. Baby will be in the safe zone. Baby has no issues related to the this type of antibodies from the first one for these ones. That is what we are trying to tell you. Uh, Mr. Ganesh Sonar. Does it require to give multivitamin to kids and what will be does? A uh, very good question, Ganesh. This is again routine question. People do ask me that kids, we want to give vitamins, we want to give better diet, we want to protect our kid, we want to have a better immunity. Please don't give vitamins to the kids. Now let's consider when we were kids, there were no vitamins. What is the best vitamin? Sunlight is for the vitamin D. Home diet includes all best vitamins. Your fruits, juices, your dals, your eggs, your paneer, all these includes uh, your vegetables, green vegetables, all vitamin A, D, E, K, vitamin B complex, everything is there. So for kids, we don't recommend any vitamin taking because to improve the immunity, no vitamins. Only for the newborn babies, we recommend vitamin D and that should be continued till one year. That is only one thing I recommend. I also recommend one thing, when you are at home, ask the kid to sit in your balcony in the morning time between seven to nine, if he's doing study, if he's watching the birds, if he's doing drawing, if he's playing indoor games, ask him to sit in the balcony where the sunlight comes. Or if he wants to read the paper, he should sit into the balcony where your sunlight is there. Suppose somebody will say that I don't have sunlight. Even though you can sit near to the window, that is accepted to me. So you don't require any additional medication to improve your immunity or to have any associated things. That is what I'm trying to say to you guys. Um, another question uh, from Patil. Sir, if the baby had COVID in this wave, what is the possibility to get reinfect again now in the third wave? Um, currently, um, uh, Priyanka Patil, currently there are no reports of the second infection in the kids. There are second infection in the adult. Yes, there are there. But most of those second infections are in the milder form. So what the current literature shows, shows that we don't have any second reports in the new uh, newborn children yet but definitely we have to take precautions i am saying that this is the current report that is what we are trying the data is indian data is there from 15th of march 2020 to the what we are talking 31st may 2020 21 so there is a data that there is no reinfection yet in the kids but the infection in the kids is less what we saw just now today in the hindustan times what i have written is that the kids infectivity in the second wave if you take 100 cases the kids were around five to seven that means kids are positive in the second wave which were less in the first wave so that is what we are trying to say um, um, uh, there the next question is from uh, mishra can influenza vaccine be taken in pregnancy in corona times yes influenza can be taken there is no contraindication about the influenza um, the pregnancy and COVID has not been recommended yet by Government of India. The lactating woman and COVID vaccine has been recommended by Government of India now in the last month or last 15 days. So what we are talking, 
this vaccine is at present moment is safe in the pregnancy no issues about that but then your your uh, uh, obstetrician will recommend that mr deshpande in the next question if a 5 year old was detected positive and is and is recovered or his lungs weak no his lungs are not weak a 5 year old has been recovered now after post covid four things you need to concentrate post covid good diet balanced diet what is balanced diet just i told you exercise i would say that meditation yoga is good part to teach our kids this is a, this is important thing for all of us to spend one hour with the kids make make a habit for them suppose the kid is waking up at 7 o'clock ask them to sleep before 9 o'clock that is a good habit because if your kid gets sleep between 10 to 5 plenty of good habits will develop in the life so this post covid treatment or post covid thing good diet good yoga good meditation and programming of their life because there will be a very very much problematic at home what they can do okay you can program 7 to 9 1 1 to 2 hour study 1 to 2 hour tv 1 to 2 hour indoor games 1 to 2 hour your garden which is available in the home everybody has now small gardens ask them teach them this is a good habit to learn new things to in the life if you, and do some homework also little bit home cleaning that's a good habit kids will learn from childhood and then when they go to the out in the hostels they will be better option because the mental thing is very important mental quotient we need to maintain don't discuss home too much covid too much covid don't put that covid news on the tv avoid discussion about the covid avoid including your kids in your whatsapp family groups that too much covid is not good discussion and hence i prefer programming of the child 7 to 9 so you yourself spend 1 to 2 hours with your own kid tell them good stories tell them your childhood stories tell them what are what are you like chess chess is a fantastic game which improves your memory yourself play with them teach them some people enjoy the uh, logo any any indoor games so that they can be occupied they should not feel that they are especially when the kid is alone one kid family when mother father and only one kid that time you become very bored so allow them teach small small things means okay fill up the water bottle that's also work he feels he will enjoy that something like dusting the house something like simple simple work can be done the next question um hello doctor i took my first dose of covid shield and then after 5 days came to know i am pregnant will this affect on my baby development can i consider it as a normal pregnancy very good question again yes it is you should consider as a normal pregnancy the reports have not shown covid vaccine related teratogenicity teratogenicity means effect to the babies covid vaccine has not shown any adverse effect to the newborn born baby hence relax you have taken the vaccine that is good for pregnancy also you are you are pregnant that is also good news and your baby is also going to be in the safe zone so take precautions suggested by your doctor continue that that will be there what extra care of premature baby in expression we should do to avoid infections like covid 19 okay patil another question good questions the premature baby for other audience i will tell you the baby who is born before 9 months or before 37 weeks completed weeks of pregnancy that is called as a premature baby so the premature baby lot of premature babies they end up into the nicu care that is a newborn intensive care unit in the newborn intensive care unit doctors and nurses they have taken care of baby suppose baby was let's say 1.8 kg and baby has now after 20 days 15 days went home so there is no separate care for preterm baby for covid 19 what is most important here 
premature babies have a low immunity so they have a risk of other infections that time you have to take precautions more means more hand wash not going outside means it is your responsibility as a father and mother to have more precautions i always say that father mother or family members have to take more precautions for protection of infection for your baby for your child the premature baby actually you have to follow proper vaccination that is a preterm care and every doctor neonatologist they will teach you how to take newborn cares post discharge care feeding things naturally initially you will have to do the what is one feed you have to monitor the growth you will have to give the all proper vaccination to that baby and concentrate on the diet so remember premature baby immunity is less but mostly you are taking more precautions hence the premature baby they do actually better than the other kids the premature baby in the first two years we have to take lot of care and hence we should continue this good care in this premature baby in a good way the premature baby also have some sort of the from reports about the infection but those are very rare rare infection now another same question mr deshpande it is said that the wave 3 of covid will affect children how to be safe and prepared okay just again i'll repeat some few points about the don't be afraid don't be panic this is just thought process we were not prepared for second wave hence we have failed in the second wave we don't want to be failed in the third wave hence we are preparing for third wave what preparation we should take i always say that it is your family that is your responsibility that means my children my family my responsibility this this is the statement we all should first follow because it is my responsibility hence we should be very very careful hand wash mask social distancing that is very important the next question is from mr yogesh hello doctor are there any chances of mucormycosis in kids and what are the symptoms and preventive measures very good question yogesh there are no reports about the mucormycosis in the children but next let's see when there are more cases we will have to be very careful so remember we are at present moment safe in the kids we have actually good thing in the kids that the infection the severity is less response is good outcome is good so everything is positive for children god has been kind to the children god wants to protect all the children we all the children of the gods so remember take precautions god wants to save us so maximum sms is very important the next question is mr khan how can we diagnose asymptomatic covid in kids below 5 years mr khan if the family members are positive you need to do the test of all family members that is a very simple rule suppose we are four members staying at home and out of the four members suppose i am positive i will have to do the test for three other members and mostly suppose i am positive today i have to watch next seven days for those three members even though they are negative on the first test that means suppose today is the first second june and i have tested positive on the second june i have done the test for my wife for my son and for my daughter and they three are negative but still i have to close watch those family members from second to ninth june because they will have a infection within next 5 to 7 days if between second to ninth june those three are no symptoms that's a good sign but i will be doing the test on today or tomorrow if i am positive that is what you diagnose as symptomatic kid suppose that as symptomatic kid suppose my son is positive and my daughter is negative and my wife is also negative daughter and wife separate and myself and my son remains together that is what usually we do in the patients when we are talking so um, i think i think that's what we are talking about the most of the uh, symptom if anybody has more questions please uh, they can uh, write and then we will have uh, we will have a discussion on the youtube or facebook thanks for your time thank you
मैं डॉक्टर सुप्रिया पुरानी डिरेक्टर आईवीएफ सहयाद्री ग्रुप ऑफ हॉस्पिटल्स आज हम पूरी पूरा विश्व मैं बता रही हूँ पूरा विश्व आज कोविड की महामारी से जूझ रहा है और ये कोविड ने हमारा जीने का तरीका ही बदल दिया है ये डेढ़ साल से हमारा प्रश्न और हमारे आंसर सिर्फ कोविड के बारे में ही रह रहे हैं तो आज ये सीरीज जो हम बना रहे हैं ये सीरीज ऑफ लेक्चर्स हम दे रहे हैं ये सीरीज का नाम है कोविड डी इस श्रृंखला में हम कोविड की बारी कोविड के बारे में सारी जानकारी देने की कोशिश करेंगे तो मैं बींग गाइनिकोलॉजिस्ट ऑब्सिटिशियन एंड आई कंसल्टेंट आपको बताने जा रही हूँ कि ये कोविड का हमारे प्रेगनेंसी में लैक्टेशन में यानी कि स्तनपान में आई ट्रीटमेंट में प्रेगनेंसी में क्या इम्पैक्ट हो सकता है होने वाला है और आने वाला जो वैक्सीन जिसको हम अस्त्र कहते हैं ये कोविड की महामारी से हमें उनको उनसे फाइट करना है तो ये फाइट करने के लिए हमारे पास जो अस्त्र है वो है वैक्सीन उसका हम कैसे इस्तेमाल करें सबसे प्रथम मैं आपको बताना चाहती हूँ क्या कोविड का वैक्सीन प्रेगनेंसी में सेफ हो सकता है क्या आज ये डेट में आज तक हमारे पास रिकॉर्ड है ये जो डेढ़ साल में इतने सारे कोविड के मरीज हमारे सामने आए हैं उनको हमने ट्रीटमेंट दिए हैं और इनसे हमें पता चलता है कि कोविड प्रेगनेंसी में भी कोविड जो हो गया था तो उसका बेबी के पे क्या इम्पैक्ट हुआ है मदर पे क्या हुआ है डिसीज प्रोसेस पे क्या हुआ है या प्रेगनेंसी में क्या हुआ इसके बारे में हम पहले जानते हैं और फिर हम वैक्सीन की तरफ आ जाए हम जो देख रहे हैं इसमें हमें पता चला है कि यस प्रेगनेंसी में भी कोविड होता है प्रेगनेंसी ये थोड़ी सी इम्यूनो सप्रेशन कंडीशन रहती है क्योंकि प्रेगनेंसी में जो हमारा बेबी रहता है वो हमारे लिए ग्राफ्ट रहता है ये हमारे ग्राफ्ट का रिजेक्शन नहीं होना चाहिए इसीलिए नेचर ने कुछ प्रोविजन बनाया है इसीलिए नेचर ने हमारी इम्यूनिटी थोड़ी सी कम कर दी है जिससे हम हमारा बेबी हमारे अंदर अच्छी तरह से बढ़े पले और इसका रिजेक्शन ना हो जाए तो ये इम्यूनो सप्रेसिव जो थोड़ी सी सप्रेसिव कंडीशन रहती है इसकी वजह से प्रेगनेंसी में हमें भी कोविड होने की संभावना बढ़ जाती है जब हम उच्च जोखिम वाले रहते हैं यानी कि जब हमारा वजन ज़्यादा रहता है हमारा ब्लड प्रेशर ज़्यादा रहता है हमें डायबिटीज़ की दवाइयाँ चालू रहती है हम हार्ट डिसीज या किडनी डिसीज साथ में रहता है तो हमारी तो हमें कोविड से संक्रमित होने की संभावना बढ़ जाती है और इस सिचुएशन में कोविड से जब हम प्रभावित हो जाते हैं तो कोविड के कॉम्प्लिकेशंस कोविड की वजह से हमें हॉस्पिटल में भर्ती ज़्यादा होना पड़ता है हमें हायर मेडिसिन देने पड़ते हैं प्रेगनेंसी की दबाव रहता है वो दबाव के कारण हमारे फेफड़े दब जाते हैं लंग की कैपेसिटी रिस्ट्रिक्ट होती है इसीलिए हमें हमें कोविड कि कोविड कोविड से जब हम संक्रमित हो जाते हैं तो उसके कॉम्प्लिकेशन ज़्यादा होने की संभावना रहती है तो हमें हॉस्पिटल में भर्ती होना रेमसिडिविर दवाइयों का दवाइयों को लेना पड़ने की और उसके साथ कभी कभी वेंटिलेटर का भी इस्तेमाल हमारे ट्रीटमेंट में किया जाता है इसीलिए प्रेगनेंसी में हमें बहुत सतर्क रहना है जो स्टैंडर्ड गाइडलाइंस देते हैं वैसे हमें सोशल डिस्टेंसिंग रखनी है मास्क का निर्माण करना है अच्छी तरह से सैनिटाइज हमें होना है तो इससे हम पहले बचने बचने की कोशिश करें कि हमें संक्रमण ना हो जाए और हो भी गया तो हमें हमें थोड़े भी सिम्टम्स महसूस हुए दिखाई दिए तो हमें तुरंत डॉक्टर के पास जाना है और हमें जान लेना है हम क्या करते हैं हमारी टेंडेंसी रहती है कि हाँ ये शायद सर्दी खांसी रहती है हमें तो हर साल होती है तो हम डॉक्टर से जाने के लिए मना करते हैं और डॉक्टर से ट्रीटमेंट या दवाइयाँ लेने के लिए हम थोड़े से दूर रहते हैं और घर में ही रहते हैं लेकिन ऐसा ना करें 
जब हमें थोड़े भी सिम्टम्स हो तो हमें तुरंत डॉक्टर के पास जाना है पहले आर टी करवानी है जो ब्लड टेस्ट रहता है इन्फ्लेमेटरी मार्कर रहते हैं कोआगुलेटरी मार्टस रहते हैं मार्कर्स रहते हैं वो जांच करते हैं और हमारे डिसीज की कंडीशन क्या है वो हमें देखना पड़ता है प्रेगनेंसी के दौरान हम ज्यादा से ज्यादा एक्सरे करवाते हैं हम सी प्रेगनेंसी में नहीं करवाते हैं तो एक्सरे करके दवाई ब्लड टेस्ट करके डॉक्टर हमें डिसीज के बारे में और उसकी सिवियरिटी के बारे में बता देते हैं जब वो ठीक रहती है तो डॉक्टर हमें होम क्वारंटाइन के लिए भी कहते हैं तो ऐसा नहीं है हर एक मरीज जिसको कोविड होता है और जो प्रेग्नेंट रहता है तो हमें हॉस्पिटलाइजेशन की ही जरूरत पड़ती है ये सच नहीं है जो कोविड का प्रभाव होता है इनफैक्ट ये देखा गया है जब हम प्रेगनेंसी में कोविड में संक्रमित हो जाते हैं तो हमारी बुखार की मात्रा थोड़ी सी कम ही रहती है हमें सिम्टम्स जो रहते हैं वो आम जनता से थोड़े से कम रहते हैं लेकिन ये जब बढ़ गए तो हमारे कॉम्प्लिकेशन थोड़े ज्यादा बढ़ने की संभावना रहती है हमें डर रहता है हम प्रेग्नेंट है हमारे साथ और एक भी जीव है जो हमारे अंदर पड़ रहा है तो उस पर क्या अफेक्ट होगा तो आपको इस बारे में बिल्कुल टेंशन नहीं लेना है आजकल इतने सारे लैक्स एंड लैक केसेस जिनको कोविड हुआ है और जो प्रेग्नेंट थे उनका डाटा हमारे सामने है जो प्रेग जो कोविड संक्रमण हो जाता है वो कभी ब्लड से नहीं होता हमारे बेबी को हमारे शरीर से ब्लड मिलता है और ब्लड के थ्रू कोविड का संक्रमण नहीं होता तो आपको बिल्कुल डरना नहीं है कि हमें कोविड है तो हमारे बेबी पे क्या अफेक्ट होगा ये भी देखा गया है प्रेगनेंसी में भी कोविड हुआ है तो भी अबॉर्शन की संभावना नहीं हुई अबाउट की अबॉर्शन के जो इंसिडेंस है वो भी नहीं बढ़ा है उसके साथ ही बेबी में नॉर्मलिटी भी ज्यादा दिखाई नहीं दी है ज्यादा से ज्यादा कोविड का सी कोविड का सिक्योरिटी कोविड की सीरियसनेस की वजह से कभी जल्दी डिलीवरी करने के पर, जल्दी डिलीवरी करने की संभावना बढ़ जाती है और उसमें प्री टर्म डिलीवरी के चांसेस बढ़ जाते हैं जब हमारी डिलीवरी प्री टर्म हो जाती है तब हमें बेबी को एन में भर्ती करने के चांसेस बढ़ जाते हैं तो ये हो गया प्रेगनेंसी में हमें कोविड जब हो जाता है तो हमें बेसिकली हमें और क्या करना है और बेबी पे ये असर कर सकता है क्या जो महत्वपूर्ण बात अभी हमारे सामने आई है जो अस्त्र अभी हमें मिला है वो है कोविड वैक्सीन कोविड वैक्सीन प्रेगनेंसी में लेना क्या सेफ हो सकता है पूरी दुनिया बेसिकली हम यूएसए स्टार्ट करें तो वो प्रेगनेंसी के दौरान कोविड वैक्सीन दे रहे हैं उनके पास बहुत बड़ा डाटा है क्योंकि उन्होंने बहुत सारे पेशेंट को कोविड बहुत सारे प्रेगनेंसीज में प्रेग्नेंट महिलाओं को कोविड का वैक्सीन दिया है यूजली बाहरी देशों में जो वैक्सीन को प्रेगनेंसी में दिया जाता है वो एम आर एन ए वैक्सीन है जिस वैक्सीन में प्रोटीन जो वायरस रहता है तो वायरस के थोड़े गुणसूत्र क्रोमोजोम्स डीएनए बस बेसिकली आरएनए निकाल के वो वैक्सीन के रूप में हमारे शरीर में दिए जाते हैं हमें इंजेक्ट किए जाते हैं तो इसको एमआरएनए वैक्सीन कहते हैं ये पूरा वायरस नहीं रहता और ये वायरस ना होने के कारण इससे हमें और हमारे बेबी को हम संक्रमित होने की संभावना ना के बराबर है जब हम ये आरएनए हमारे शरीर में इंजेक्ट करवाते हैं तो हमारे शरीर में बहुत सारी एंटीबॉडीज का निर्माण होता है और वो एंटीबॉडीज हमारे ब्लड के थ्रू हमारे रक्त के जो प्रवाह है जो रक्त की बेसिकली ब्लड फ्लो जो रहता है उसके थ्रू बेबी के पास जाते हैं और वो भी देखा गया है प्रेगनेंसी के दौरान जब गर्भवती माँ कोविड का वैक्सीन लेती है तो डिलीवरी के बाद बेबी के पास वो वैक्सीन हम में हम बेबी के पास वो एंटीबॉडी चले जाते हैं और बेबी को ऑलरेडी प्रोटेक्शन मिलता है ये ये भी देखा गया है जिस माँ ने कोविड का वैक्सीनेशन लिया है 
उसके एम्बिलिकल कॉर्ड के ब्लड में या एम्नियोटिक फ्लूड में या ब्रेस्ट में जो मिल्क होता है इसमें भी एंटीबॉडीज पाए गए हैं इसका अर्थ यह है जब प्रेगनेंसी के दौरान हम ये वैक्सीन लेते हैं तो उसको हमें भी बेनिफिट होता है और हमारे होने वाले बेबी को भी बेनिफिट होता है तो ये प्रश्न जो क्या प्रेगनेंसी में हम वैक्सीन ले सकते हैं क्या तो ये प्रश्न एक्चुअली मैं बता बताऊंगी कि प्रेगनेंसी में आपको वैक्सीन लेना ही चाहिए लेकिन हमारे इंडिया के मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ हेल्थ एंड फैमिली वेलफेयर ने अब तक हमें इजाजत नहीं दी है अनुमति नहीं दी है क्योंकि हमारे पास जो वैक्सीन है जो कोवैक्सीन है कोविशील्ड और दूसरा कोविशील्ड है कोवैक्सीन और कोविशील्ड ये दो ब्रांड हमारे भारत में अवेलेबल है कोविशीन और कोवैक्सीन ये कोल्ड वैक्सीन है और दूसरा कोविशील्ड ये एडिनो वायरस में स्पेक्टर वैक्सीन है तो ये जब वैक्सीन जब हम वैक्सीन तैयार करते हैं तो तैयार होने के बाद हमारी पहली स्टेप रहती है उस पर स्टडीज करना वो स्टडीज क्या होते हैं ये स्टडीज हम पहले एनिमल को वो देते हैं एनिमल को इंजेक्ट करते हैं प्राणी मात्रा में इंजेक्ट करते करते हैं और देखते हैं इसका क्या असर पॉजिटिव या निगेटिव कौन सा असर ये प्राणी मात्रा में हुआ है उसके बाद दूसरी स्टेज होती है ह्यूमंस में स्टडी करना और ह्यूमंस में मिस हमारे अंदर मनुष्य प्राणी के अंदर हम वो इंजेक्ट करते हैं और देखते हैं कि इसमें क्या पॉजिटिव और क्या नेगेटिव इम्पैक्ट हमें हुए हैं हमारे पास कोविड ये नया डिसीज है और हमारे पास इतना समय नहीं था कि हम उसका पूरी तरह से जानकारी दें इसीलिए हम छोटे बच्चों को जो अठारह साल से नीचे है या प्रेग्नेंट महिलाएं इसके साथ स्तनपान महिलाओं को ये वैक्सीन स्टडीज में इनको इंक्लूड नहीं किया था इसीलिए हमारा इसीलिए हमारे पास डाटा नहीं है कि इन लोगों पे क्या असर हो सकता है लेकिन हमारे पास ये निश्चित डाटा है कि प्रेगनेंसी के दौरान स्तनपान करने वाली माओ को या उसके साथ ही प्रेग्नेंट लेडीज में प्रेगनेंसी में गर्भवती महिलाओं में कोविड का एक्चुअल संक्रमण होने के बाद भी जब बेबी को एंटीबॉडीज मिलते हैं तो वैक्सीन के बाद भी और बेबी पे बिल्कुल असर नहीं होता ना प्रेगनेंसी पे असर होता ना गर्भपात ज्यादा होते ना बेबी में नॉर्मलिटीज होती है ना हमारे प्रेगनेंसी के दौरान भी जो हमारे सिस्टम में बदलाव होते हैं या प्रेगनेंसी में भी अफेक्ट नहीं होता तो जैसे वायरस का भी इतना इम्पैक्ट नहीं होता तो वैक्सीन का भी इम्पैक्ट इन सारी स्थितियों में ना इन जो हम बोलते हैं निगेटिव इम्पैक्ट वो नहीं होने वाला है तो आइडियली हमें प्रेगनेंसी में होना चाहिए लेकिन इंडिया में स्टडी ना होने के ये दो वैक्सीन जो हम यूज कर रहे हैं उस उसको उसके स्टडीज प्रेगनेंट लेडीज में नहीं है इसीलिए गाइडलाइंस में गर्भवती महिलाओं को और स्तनपान करने वाली माताओं को और बच्चों को ये नहीं दिया गया है ऐसे है लेकिन जब वास्तविक तौर पे हम सोचेंगे जो हमारे पास जो दो वैक्सीन है जो इसको हम बोलते हैं कोवैक्सीन कोवैक्सीन ये इंडियन वैक्सीन है ये जैसे मैंने बताया ये किल्ड वैक्सीन है मरा हुआ वायरस हम ये वैक्सीन यूज करने के लिए तैयार करने के लिए यूज करते हैं ये वायरस मरा हुआ है ये वायरस मरा हुआ है इसीलिए हम जब इंजेक्ट करते हैं तो वो हमारे अंदर डिसीज पैदा नहीं करता यानी डिसीज हमारे अंदर इस वायरस से नहीं होता तो किल्ड वैक्सीन हम प्रेगनेंसी में देना सेफ समझते हैं जो दूसरे किल्ड वैक्सीन है जो हम प्रेगनेंसी में देते हैं वो है फ्लू वैक्सीन स्वाइन फ्लू वैक्सीन ये सारे वैक्सीन तो किल्ड वैक्सीन रहते हैं और वो हम प्रेगनेंसी में सेफली देते हैं इसीलिए किल्ड वैक्सीन का सेफली प्रेग में प्रेगनेंसी में देना ये हम सेफ्टी कहते हैं जो वैक्सीन हम प्रेगनेंसी में नहीं दे सकते वो है लाइव वैक्सीन क्योंकि लाइव वैक्सीन में लाइव अटेनिएटेड वैक्सीन में कोविड का वायरस वो अर्धमरा वायरस अधमरा वायरस ये वैक्सीन बनाने के लिए यूज किया जाता है 
जब ये लाइव अटेन्यूटेड वायरस ये लाइव वैक्सीन जब हम कोविड जब हम प्रेगनेंसी में देते हैं तो वो प्रेगनेंसी में वो डिसीज होने के चांसेस रहते हैं हल्का सा डिसीज वैक्सीन है इसलिए डिसीज होगा लेकिन हल्का सा लेकिन ये देने में प्रेगनेंसी में प्रतिबंध किया जाता है इम्यूनो सप्रेसिड लोगों को और प्रेगनेंसी में हम लाइव वैक्सीन नहीं देते इसीलिए जो लाइव वैक्सीन के एग्जाम्पल्स है वो लाइव वैक्सीन जैसे रूबेला वैक्सीन रहता है चिकन पॉक्स वैक्सीन रहता है मीजल्स का वैक्सीन रहता है एम का वैक्सीन ये वैक्सीन लाइव वैक्सीन रहने रहते हैं इसीलिए हम प्रेगनेंसी में नहीं देते क्योंकि इस वायरस से इस वैक्सीन से थोड़ा वायरस का संक्रमण होने के चांसेस रहते हैं जब हम लाइव वैक्सीन देते हैं तो उसके बाद हम प्रेगनेंसी के लिए भी हम मना करते हैं कि एक महीना आप प्रेगनेंसी होने के लिए थोड़ी सी आप उस पर रोकथाम करें और नहीं चांस ले तो ज्यादा अच्छा होगा तो ये हुआ लाइव वैक्सीन लेकिन जब कोविड का लाइन लाइव वैक्सीन के बारे में हम बात करते हैं तो अब तक कोविड के लाइव वैक्सीन विश्व में तैयार किया गया है लेकिन अब तक वो मार्केट करने की अनुमति नहीं दी गई है इसीलिए आज हमारे पास आज मिति तक जो अवेलेबल वैक्सीन है उसमें लाइव वैक्सीन नहीं है इसीलिए एक्चुअली हम सेफली वो वैक्सीन ले सकते दूसरा इंपॉर्टेंट वैक्सीन जो है जो हमारे भारत में अवेलेबल है वो है कोविशील्ड ये कोविशील्ड जो वैक्सीन है ये एडिनो वायरस से यानी कि वेक्टर वैक्सीन ये ये वैक्सीन है ये वेक्टर वैक्सीन को कहते हैं ये वेक्टर वैक्सीन है ये वेक्टर वैक्सीन में एक एक प्लेन वायरस मीन जो हमारे शरीर में एबनॉर्मेलिटी या संक्रमण क्रिएट नहीं करता और हमारे लिए धोखादायक नहीं रहता इस वैक्सीन को इस्तेमाल किया है व्हीकल के रूप में कि जिस वैक्सीन में जिसका कवरिंग एक सेफ वैक्सीन इसका कवरिंग रहेगा और उसके अंदर जो जनिकीय मटेरियल रहेगा क्रोमोजोमल जीन्स रहेंगे ये प्रोटीन मटीरियल रहेगा ये कोविड का रहेगा लेकिन सेफ वैक्सीन के अंदर थोड़े कोविड के जीन्स डाल के ये वैक्सीन बनाया गया है इसको हम वेक्टर वैक्सीन कहते हैं क्योंकि सेफ वायरस हमने वेक्टर के तौर पे व्हीकल के तौर पे हमने यूज किया है और वो हमें इसका ये वैक्सीन बन जाता है तो वेक्टर वैक्सीन को फॉक्सी फेडरेशन ऑफ ऑप्सटिक गाइनिकोलॉजी जो है उन्होंने वेक्टर वैक्सीन को भी प्रेगनेंसी में सेफ बता दिया है क्योंकि वेक्टर वैक्सीन ये जो एडिनो वायरस है ये प्रेगनेंसी में सेफ वैक्सीन क्या है प्रेगनेंसी में भी हो गया है एडिनो वैक्सीन दिया गया इंजेक्ट किया तो प्रेगनेंसी में बिल्कुल डैमेज नहीं करता ना प्रेग्नेंट माँ को इसीलिए ये भी सेफ वैक्सीन ऐसे कह, कहते हैं जो थेरोटिकल रिस्क रहती है कि एडिनो वायरस की, की वजह से बेबी में कुछ प्रॉब्लम आने के चांसेस है आशंका है यह रिस्क वो कहते हैं ये थेरोटिकल रिस्क है वो एक्चुअल रिस्क देखी नहीं गई है ऐसे उसका उनका कहना है तो ये हो गया एडिनो वायरस ये हो गया वेक्टर वैक्सीन यानी कि कोविशील्ड के बारे में तो ये दो वैक्सीन है जो हम आ, हम प्रेगनेंसी में देने के लिए देने की कोशिश करते हैं और वो गाइडलाइंस के लिए हम वेट कर रहे हैं कि जब गवर्नमेंट कहे कि हम दे सकते हैं लेकिन मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ हेल्थ एंड फैमिली वेलफेयर ने हमें स्तनपान करने वाली माताओं में ये वैक्सीन का देना देने के लिए अनुमति दी है इसीलिए ब्रेस्ट फीडिंग के दौरान आप जरूर वैक्सीन ले सकते हो लेकिन आपको ये देखना है कि आप जब वैक्सीन ले रही हो तो आपको आपको दूसरा कोई वैक्सीन आपने चौदह दिन के अंदर नहीं लिया है आपका कोविड संक्रमण हुआ रहेगा तो आपको ये देखना है कि आप 12 वीक्स तक आप ये वैक्सीन नहीं ले सकते लेकिन ब्रेस्ट फीडिंग में भी आप ये वैक्सीन ले सकते हो ये सिंपल सी चीजें आपको ध्यान में रखनी है जब आपको एक्टिव एक्यूट कुछ अलग सा इन्फेक्शन रहेगा तो भी आपको वैक्सीन नहीं लेना है आप हॉस्पिटलाइज कुछ सीरियस कंडीशन के लिए हो गए हैं तो आपको आठ हफ्ते तक ये वैक्सीन नहीं चार से आठ हफ्तों तक ये वैक्सीन नहीं लेना है 
तो आपने आपकी कोविड की ट्रीटमेंट से आपको समझ आपको कोविड का संक्रमण हो गया है आपकी ट्रीटमेंट हुई है और आपको प्लाज्मा दिया गया है तो भी मोनोक्लोनियल एंटीबॉडीज दिए गए हैं तो भी 12 हफ्ते आपको रुकना है और सेफली ब्रेस्ट फीडिंग के दौरान भी आप वैक्सीन लगवा सकते हो तो ये हो गया ब्रेस्ट फीडिंग माताएं यानी कि स्तनपान करने वाली माताएं और कोविड का वैक्सीन तो हमें टेक होम मैसेज हमारे पास एक है कि ब्रेस्ट फीडिंग माओ को वैक्सीन जरूर लेना है और जब माताएं वैक्सीन लेती है उनके शरीर में जब एंटीबॉडीज तैयार होते हैं वो बेबी की तरफ वो एंटीबॉडीज जाते हैं मिल्क के थ्रू भी वो सिक्रीट होते हैं और बेबी को भी इनडायरेक्ट इम्यूनिटी मिलती है इसीलिए उन्होंने वो जरूर लेने जिस माँ को किसी वैक्सीन की एलर्जी रहती है तो ही हमें वो इन्फॉर्म करना है और वैक्सीन नहीं लेना है जिसने फर्स्ट डोज लिया है उसका एलर्जिक रिएक्शन हुए है तो नहीं लेना है जब वैक्सीन लेते हैं तो वैक्सीन लेने के बाद थोड़ा फीवर हो जाता है जब इंजेक्शन साइट रहती है इसमें थोड़ा सा पेन रहता है थोड़ा सा स्वेलिंग रहता है थोड़ा बदन दर्द रहता है तो ये सारे सिम्टम्स जो हम सिंपल पैरासिटामोल की दवाइयों से भी ये सारे सिम्टम्स हमारे कम हो से हो जाते हैं इसीलिए ये सिम्टम्स को डर के डर के मारे हम नहीं लेना चाहते तो ऐसा नहीं करना है आपको जरूर लेने आपको वो टेंशन रहती है जब वैक्सीन मैं ले लेती हूँ फिर फीवर आ जाता है बॉडी हो जाता है तो मैं अपने बच्चे को कैसे पिलाऊ लेकिन ये भी गलत है आप ये हमें रीजन मालूम है हम हमें वैक्सीन की वजह से ये फीवर हुआ है तो आपको बिल्कुल डरना नहीं है कि ये फीवर की वजह से ये फीवर दूसरी कुछ संक्रमण की वजह से नहीं हुआ है तो आपको ये फीवर वैक्सीन की वजह से हुआ है तो आप जरूर बेबी को पिलवा सकते हो बेबी को दूध दे सकते हो फीडिंग कर सकते हो जब प्रेगनेंसी में भी जो गाइडलाइंस जब मिल जाएंगे हमें कि आप प्रेगनेंसी में भी सेफली दे सकते हो तो भी हमें ये ध्यान रखना है जब हम हमारे रूटीन वैक्सीन लेते हैं जैसे कि टीटी का वैक्सीन लेते हैं टी डैप का वैक्सीन लेते हैं कभी स्वाइन फ्लू का वैक्सीन लेते हैं तो जब इस वैक्सीन को हम देते हैं तो उसके पहले हमें उसके बाद और उसके पहले चौदह दिन का फासला रखना है समझो हमने आज टी वैक्सीन ले लिया है तो चौदह दिन के बाद आप कोविड uh, का वैक्सीन ले सकती हो और उसके बाद चौदह दिन के और उसके बाद चौदह दिन के बाद ही दो हफ्ते के बाद हम दूसरा कुछ वैक्सीन हम देने वाले सब जो हम साइंस uh, का वैक्सीन देने वाले तो उसके बाद चौदह दिन आप ले सकते हो आपके जो प्रोटोकॉल रहते हैं टू डोसेस का जो दो डोसेस का प्रोटोकॉल है वो आपको फॉलो करना है फर्स्ट डोज के बाद जो डिजायर इंटरवल जिस वैक्सीन के लिए रहता है वो आपको मेंटेन करके दोनों वैक्सीन के डोसेस आपको लेने रहेंगे और दूसरी इम्पॉर्टेंट महत्वपूर्ण बात यह है कि जिस टाइप का वैक्सीन आपने पहले लिया है आपने किल्ड वैक्सीन जो कोवैक्सीन लिया है तो वही वैक्सीन का दूसरा डोज आपको लगवाना है तो जो आपने पहले कोविशील्ड लिया है वेक्टर वैक्सीन लिया है वेक्टर वैक्सीन लिया है तो दूसरा डोज भी उसी वैक्सीन का लिया है हमें ये नहीं सोचना है नहीं अभी स्पुटनिक आ गया है इंडिया में चलो अभी नहीं स्पुटनिक की प्रोटेक्शन रेट बहुत ही अच्छी है तो अभी मैं कोविशील्ड या कोवैक्सीन को मैं बंद करती हूँ दूसरा डोज मैं स्पुटनिक का ले स्पुटनिक का ले लेती हूँ ये जो हमारी समझ है ये समझ गलत है गलत फहमी है आपको इस बारे में भी वेट नहीं आपको इस बात के लिए भी वेट नहीं करना है कि हमें ये दो वैक्सीन पसंद नहीं है जब एम आर एन ए वैक्सीन आ जाएगा तब मैं लगवा लूंगी हमें ये ध्यान में रखना है जब ये वेक्टर वैक्सीन लगते हैं तो ये वेक्टर वैक्सीन को बूस्टर डोसेस की जरूरत रहती है और ये बूस्टर डोसेस हमें मालूम नहीं है कोविड कितने दिन रहने वाला है शायद ये बूस्टर डोसेस हमें हर साल भी लगवाने पड़ने की संभावना है हमें ये अभी हम कुछ बता ही नहीं सकते हमें मालूम ही नहीं है तो इसीलिए हमें पहले जो हमें जो वैक्सीन मिल रहा है वो लेना है क्योंकि ये जो वैश्विक महामारी है उससे बचने के लिए और उसकी रोकथाम करने के लिए हमें पहले वैक्सीन लेना है वैक्सीन से हम खुद प्रोटेक्ट होते हैं हमें 
संक्रमण हो संक्रमण होने की संभावना बहुत कम हो जाती है दूसरी इंपॉर्टेंट बात दूसरी महत्वपूर्ण बात हम दूसरों को संक्रमित करने के भी चांसेस बहुत कम हो जाते हैं और समझो वैक्सीन लेने के बावजूद भी हमें कोविड का संक्रमण हो गया तो उसकी सीवियरिटी बहुत कम हो जाती है बस शायद वैक्सीन नहीं लिया तो आपको हॉस्पिटलाइज करना पड़ता है कभी वेंटिलेटर चलाना पड़ता है कभी रेंजरेबिल इंजेक्शन का दिल दिलवाने होते हैं लेकिन दिलाने की नौबत आ सकती है लेकिन जब आपने वैक्सीन लिया है और आपको कोविड का संक्रमण हो गया है तो आपको इन सीवियरिटी से आप बच सकते हो तो तो इसीलिए ये वैक्सीन बहुत ही महत्वपूर्ण है तो इसीलिए आप चॉइस पे नहीं रहना कि ये मुझे मिलना चाहिए स्पुटनिक मिलेगा तो ही मैं वैक्सीन लूंगी ऐसे नहीं है आपको रजिस्टर करवाना है और आपको आपके इसमें खाते में और आपके नसीब में जो वैक्सीन रहेगा वो आपको लगवाना है क्योंकि वो हमारी लाइफ लाइन है वो हमारा शस्त्र है और जब हम रहेंगे तो हमारे पास बाद वाला चॉइस रहने वाला है लेकिन हमें कुछ हो गया तो हमारे पास दूसरा ऑप्शन ही नहीं है इसीलिए ये बहुत आपको ये बहुत अच्छी तरह से जान लेना है कि वैक्सीन कौन सा मिलता है इसके बारे में आप बिल्कुल टेंशन नहीं लेना आपके गवर्नमेंट को आपकी बहुत चिंता है इसीलिए वही डिसाइड करेंगे कि आपको क्या करना है तो ये हो गया वैक्सीन जॉरिंग प्रेगनेंसी दूसरी महत्वपूर्ण बात फर्टिलिटी के दौरान जब हम प्रेगनेंसी कंसीव करने की कोशिश करते हैं यानी कि फर्टिलिटी की ट्रीटमेंट हमारी कभी चल रही है कभी हमें आ, ऐसा भी हो जाता है कि अभी हमें कंसीव करना है हमें शादी को दो तीन साल हो गए लास्ट ईयर हमें कंसीव करना था हमारा सारा प्लानिंग फाइनेंशियल प्लानिंग घर का प्लानिंग फैमिली प्लानिंग पूरा लास्ट ईयर में कंसीव करने के लिए मैंने पूरा सोच समझ के रखा था लेकिन कोविड कोविड का ये पैंडमिक आ गया मैं चांस नहीं ले सकी लेकिन अब तो मैं डिग्ले नहीं कर सकती मेरी उम्र भी अभी 35 या 32 के ऊपर चली गई है तो मुझे ज़्यादा अभी वेट नहीं करना है तो क्या मैं फर्टिलिटी के लिए ट्राई कर सकूँ और ये कोविड वैक्सीन दे सकूँ सब या जनवरी के दौरान एक लिटरेचर में एक स्टडी आया था और स्टडी में बताया गया था कोविड का वैक्सीन जब हम लेते हैं बेसिकली तो हमारी फर्टिलिटी कम हो जाती है उन्होंने बताया था उन कंक्री डिस्कशन में जो टॉपिक था तो उसमें उन्होंने एक्सप्लेनेशन दिया था प्लसेंटा यानी कि आवर जो बेबी को ब्लड पहुंचाती है बेबी का पोषण करती है बेबी का न्यूट्रिशन करती है ये आवल में ये प्लासेंटा पे प्लासेंटा में प्रोटीन रहता है सिंसिटिन नाम का प्रोटीन तो ये सिंसिटिन नाम के प्रोटीन का कुछ पार्ट ये वायरस के स्पाइक प्रोटीन में पाया गया है तो सिंसिटिन प्रोटीन का कुछ पार्ट वायरस के स्पाइक प्रोटीन में जब है तो जब हम ये वैक्सीन जो वायरस से बना हुआ वैक्सीन देते हैं तो ये सेंसिटिव प्रोटीन्स के अगेंस्ट भी एंटीबॉडीज तैयार हो गए हमारे शरीर में और जब हम ट्राई करने की कोशिश करते हैं जब हम कंसीव करने की कोशिश करते हैं तो ये एंटीबॉडीज हमारे प्लसेंटा पे अटैक करेंगे और हमारे अबॉर्शन का रेट बढ़ जाएगा हम कंसी होने के लिए हमारे हमें दिक्कत हो जाएगी हमारे बेबीज में कुछ बदलाव हो सकते हैं उसका न्यूट्रिशन कम हो सकता है और बे, बेबी को बेबी की तरफ प्लसेंटा खराब होने की तरह की रीजन की वजह से कारण की वजह से बेबी की तरफ जाने वाला ब्लड फ्लो कम होगा और हमारे बेबी के हार्ट बीट स्टॉप हो सकते हैं इसीलिए पूरा विश्व डर गया कि अभी क्या करें ये वैक्सीन ले या ना ले। लेकिन जैसे मैंने पहले ही बताया है इस वैक्सीन में इस प्रोटीन जो प्रोटीन है उसका थोड़ा ही पार्ट ये थोड़ा ही पार्ट ये वायरस के वायरस प्रोटीन से मिलता है या वायरस प्रोटीन का थोड़ा सा पार्ट ये प्लसेंटा के सेंसिटिव प्रोटीन से मिलता है 
थोड़ा पार्ट का मतलब ये नहीं है कि पूरा के पूरी इम्यूनिटी में अगेंस्ट पूरे पूरे प्लेसेंटा की अगेंस्ट हमारे एंटीबॉडीज तैयार हो गए और उसको रिजेक्ट करेंगे मिसाल पे तौर पे बताया जाए तो सब एक फोन नंबर है दोनों फोन नंबर में एक आठ आंकड़ा है दोनों फोन नंबर में समझो हमने पहला फोन नंबर लगा लिया उसमें आठ आंकड़ा था तो इसका मतलब ये नहीं है क्योंकि थोड़ा सा पोर्शन यानी कि एक ही नंबर में बता रही हूं इसीलिए मैंने एक को फोन लगवाया है दूसरों के भी लग गए ऐसा होता है कभी ऐसा नहीं होता इसीलिए छोटा पार्ट थोड़ा सा पार्ट कॉमन रहने से पूरे के पूरे ऑर्गन की तरफ या अगेंस्ट एंटीबॉडीज नहीं बनते यानी कि पूरे प्लेसेंटा के अगेंस्ट एंटीबॉडीज नहीं बनते इसीलिए ये जो बताया गया था ये दावा था ये बहुत बड़ी गलतफहमी है इस पे ध्यान नहीं देना है ये सच होता तो ये पैंडेमिक के दौरान फर्टिलिटी का रेट पूरे विश्व में डिक्लाइन हो जाता कम हो जाता वह कम लोग जो ऑलरेडी कोविड पॉजिटिव हो चुके हैं वो प्रेग्नेंट नहीं बनते थे जो कोविड पॉजिटिव संक्रमित प्रेग्नेंट महिलाएं हैं उनके अबॉर्शन हो जाते थे बेबी अंदर स्टिल बर्थ हो जाते थे मीन्स अंदर के अंदर उनको न्यूट्रिशन या ब्लड फ्लो नहीं मिलने से उनके हार्ट बीट स्टॉप हो जाते थे उसके बाद बेबी में प्रॉब्लम्स हो जाते थे तो बेबी का बेबी का जो विकास है वो कम हो जाता था अविकसित बच्चे हो जाते थे ऐसा कई भी रिपोर्ट्स में इतना सारा डाटा अपने सामने है इसमें कई भी ये सारे प्रॉब्लम्स हमारे सामने नहीं आए इसीलिए हमें इस बात से बिल्कुल नहीं डरना है और फर्टिलिटी ट्रीटमेंट के दौरान जब आपको कंसीव करना है इसीलिए इस दौरान आप सेफली वैक्सीन ले सकते हैं आपने वैक्सीन ले लिया तो आपको ये नहीं समझना है कि हमें अभी एक महीना या दो महीने मैंने वैक्सीन ले लिया है तो मुझे ट्राई नहीं करना है ये भी सरासर गलत बात है क्योंकि प्रेगनेंसी के दौरान भी जो हम दे सकते हैं इसके लिए फासला रखने की बिल्कुल जरूरत नहीं है जब आप फर्टिलिटी के ट्रीटमेंट ले रहे ले रहे हैं आप आईवीएफ करवा रहे हैं आप आईयूआई करवा रहे हैं तो भी आपको वैक्सीन लेना है और वैक्सीन लिया है इसीलिए आपको ट्रीटमेंट रुकवाने की बिल्कुल जरूरत नहीं है दूसरी महत्वपूर्ण बात आप जो वैक्सीन लगवाते हो तो बहुत लोगों का मानना रहता है जब हमें वैक्सीन लगवाना है तो हमें पहले कोविड की टेस्ट करके देखनी है रैपिड एंटीजन टेस्ट आरटीपीसीआर टेस्ट वो मैं पहले करके देखूंगा और फिर मैं डिसाइड करूंगी कि मैं वैक्सीन लेने वाली हूं या नहीं इसके भी बिल्कुल जरूरत नहीं है आपको कोई भी सिम्टम नहीं रहेगा तो आप सेफली वैक्सीन ले सकते हो आपको ये टेस्ट करने की जरूरत है ना आपको ये टेस्ट करने की जरूरत ना आपको यूरिन की प्रेगनेंसी टेस्ट की टेस्ट करने की जरूरत है आप सेफली वैक्सीन फर्टिलिटी ट्रीटमेंट के दौरान या प्रेस फीडिंग में या आप जब ट्रीटमेंट ले रहे हो या कंसीव करने की चाहत रखते हो तो आप जरूर ले सकते हो आपके पास जैसे मैंने बताया हमारे पास ऑप्शन भी नहीं है हमें कौन सा वैक्सीन लेना है इसीलिए दोनों वैक्सीन आप सेफली ले सकते हो बहुत बार ऐसी सफाना हो प्रश्न पड़ता है हमें कोविड हम कोविड से संक्रमित हो जाते हैं हम प्रेग्नेंट है और हमारा डिसीज की जो सीफियरिटी है वो बहुत बढ़ चुकी है डॉक्टर ने हमें एडमिट कर लिया है और हमें रेमसडेविर इंजेक्शन देने के लिए सजेस्ट किया है तो हमारे मन में बहुत टेंशन आ जाता है मिस हमारे रिलेटिव्स के मन में हमारे पति है हमारी माँ है हमारे डैडी है कि अभी क्या करें प्रेगनेंसी तो है जो अनबोर्न बच्चा है हमारा आ, अंदर पेट के अंदर पल रहा है बेबी है ये रैम सेवेद की वजह से बेबी पे क्या असर होता है क्या हम ये ना दे हमने नहीं दिया तो हमारी गर्भ गर्भवती माँ को तकलीफ परेशानी होने वाली है उसका डिसीज सीवियर होने वाला है तो हमें अभी किस पक्ष में बात करें देना है या नहीं देना है लेकिन मुझे आपको ये कहना है ये इंजेक्शन देने से हमारी तबीयत अच्छी होने के डॉक्टर 
डॉक्टर बता रहे हैं कि ये लेने से हमारा डिसीज कंट्रोल में आ जाएगा तो आपको ये जरूर लेना है हमें हमारे अनबॉर्न बेबी को बेबी के बारे में बिल्कुल नहीं सोचना है क्योंकि ये रैमसेडेविर इंजेक्शन पहले इबोला के टाइम जो इबोला का भी जो संक्रमण हुआ था और पैंडेमिक हुआ था अफ्रीका में तो भी ये दिया था और तभी भी ये इसकी जांच और ये देखा गया है कि ये लेने के बाद अबॉर्शन के रिस्क बेबी में डिफॉर्मिटी जो होती है उसके रिस्क में बेबी के अवयव जो तैयार होते हैं जब पेट में बेबी रहता है तब आई पहले तीन महीने में बेबी के सारे अवयव तैयार होते हैं उसको हम पीरियड ऑफ ऑर्गेनिजेनेसिस कहते हैं इसके दौरान भी ये दिया गया तो भी बेबी के अब नॉर्मलिटी की रेट में बेबी अब नॉर्मलिटी के रेट में रेट नहीं बढ़ा है जो आम तौर पे रहता है थ्री टू फाइव परसेंट उतना ही अब नॉर्मलिटी का रेट है ना ये इंजेक्शन लेने से बढ़ गया है या बेबी को भी खतरा होने के चांसेस बहुत ही कम है तो आपने बिल्कुल टेंशन नहीं लेना है आप ये इंजेक्शन सेफली लगवा सकते हो बेबी के बारे में टेंशन लेने की आपको बिल्कुल जरूरत नहीं है ये भी सोचा गया है ये इंजेक्शन देने से हमारे प्रेगनेंसी पे क्या असर होगा क्या हमें हमारे लीवर पे हमारे किडनी पे असर होगा या हमें वो डैमेज होने के चांसेस है वैसे भी नहीं देखा गया है या बीपी बढ़ा या शक्कर बढ़ गई ऐसे भी नहीं पाया गया है इसीलिए ये इंजेक्शन देने के बाद भी बावजूद भी हमारी प्रेगनेंसी पे बिल्कुल एडवर्स इफेक्ट हमारी प्रेगनेंसी पे नहीं हुआ है तो ये इंजेक्शन आप सेफली ले सकते हैं सिर्फ आपको एक प्रिकॉशन लेनी है जब हम जब हम ब्रेस्ट फीडिंग के दौरान हमें ये इंजेक्शन लगवाने की नौबत आती है तो क्या ये इंजेक्शन देना है ब्रेस्ट फीडिंग के दौरान जब ये इंजेक्शन पहले तो एक बात है जब आपको ये इंजेक्शन लगवाना होता है तो आपकी कंडीशन इतनी सही नहीं है आप आप आपकी डिसीज प्रोसेस सीवियर है इसीलिए आपको इंजेक्शन लगवाना पड़ता है तो इस सिचुएशन ब्रेस्ट फीडिंग करने करने की सिचुएशन आप है ही नहीं आप हॉस्पिटल में भर्ती हो तो आप उस दौरान ब्रेस्ट फीडिंग कर ही नहीं सकते हो क्योंकि आपकी खुद की कंडीशन ब्रेस्ट फीडिंग करवाने जैसी नहीं है तो ब्रेस्ट फीडिंग माताओं को हमें ये नहीं देना है लेकिन जब हम रैमसेडिवेर इंजेक्शन हम देते हैं तो ये ब्रेस्ट मिल्क में सिक्रेट हो जाता है लेकिन वो जब बेबी लेता है तो भी ओरली जब हम लेते हैं माउथ से लेते हैं रैमसेडिवेर तो उसके एब्सॉर्ब होने के चांसेस भी बहुत कम रहते हैं यानी कि ले भी लिया बेबी ने दूध तो भी बेबी के गट के थ्रू एब्सॉर्ब होने के चांसेस कम रहते हैं फिर भी जिनको ये दे गया है और उसने एक्सप्रेस मिल्क बेबी को पिलाया है लेकिन पिलाना हम बोलेंगे हम आप नहीं पिलाना जिन्होंने जिन्होंने पिला पिलाया है उस और पिलाना चाहती है उस उन्होंने ध्यान रखना है कि बेबी के लीवर फंक्शन टेस्ट बेबी के किडनी फंक्शन टेस्ट वो डिस्टर्ब होने के चांसेस रहते हैं इसके साथ ही बेबी का ब्लड प्रेशर फ्लक्चुएट होने के चांसेस रहते हैं डायरिया लगने के चांसेस रहते हैं इसीलिए बेड इसीलिए स्तनपान के दौरान जब हमें रैमसिडिवीर इंजेक्शन लगता है तो हम स्तनपान करने को मना करते हैं बस उतनी ही बात है तो हमें सिर्फ यही याद रखना है कि स्तनपान के दौरान हमें इंजेक्शन लगवाना है तो हमें ब्रेस्ट फीडिंग नहीं करना है तो आमतौर पे ये बात हुई है तो कुछ प्रश्न हमारे सामने आए हैं उसका उत्तर देने की हम कोशिश करेंगे उसके आ, या सुकन्या ने लिखा है कि डॉक्टर फर्स्ट डोज ऑफ कोविशील्ड मैंने ले लिया है और पाँच दिन के बाद मुझे पता चला है कि मैं प्रेग्नेंट हो गई हूँ सो विल इट अफेक्ट ऑन माय बेबी डेवलपमेंट एंड कैन आई कंसीडर दिस इज ए नॉर्मल प्रेगनेंसी सुकन्या जी आपने पहला कोविशील्ड का डोज लिया है और आपको पता चला है कि आप प्रेगनेंट हो कंग्रेचुलेशंस लेकिन आपको मुझे ये बताना है कि आपने दवाई ले ली है वो डोज कोविशील्ड का अच्छी तरह से आपको एक्सेप्ट हो गया है तो डोज ने अभी काम करना शुरू किया किया है डोज ने अभी एंटीबॉडीज बनाना शुरू कर दिया है और इन सारी एंटीबॉडीज का बेबी की डेवलपमेंट पे बिल्कुल असर नहीं पड़ता तो आपको मैं ये बताना चाहती हूँ 
इससे अबॉर्शन की रिस्क नहीं बढ़ती इसके इसमें बेबी में अबनॉर्मलिटीज लेने की रिस्क बिल्कुल नहीं बढ़ती तो आपको निश्चिंत रहना है और ये प्रेगनेंसी को आप नॉर्मल प्रेगनेंसी के तौर पे ही कंसीडर कर सकते हैं या विशाल ने पूछा है एनी स्पेशल प्रिकॉशन नीड टू बी टेकन ऑफ प्रेग्नेंट वुमेन ड्यूरिंग कोविड सिचुएशन विशाल जी मैं जो मुझे आपको आपसे ये कहना है कि कोविड सिचुएशन जो चल रही है सिचुएशन मीन्स आउटसाइड सिचुएशन यस इसमें हमें प्रेगनेंसी में या गर्भवती महिला को संभाल के रखना है जो स्टैंडर्ड प्रोटोकॉल्स दिए हुए हैं वो फॉलो करने हैं जैसे कि फेस मास्क सोशल डिस्टेंसिंग सैनिटाइजेशन घर से बाहर या भीड़ में नहीं जाने देना है और उसकी इम्यूनिटी शारीरिक इम्यूनिटी जो हम देते हैं इम्यूनिटी बढ़ाने के लिए जो हम वेरियस चीजें लेते हैं तो वो लेते रहनी है उसका भी वो भी सोचा जाता है कि ये सारा हम लेते हैं हम गार्लिक लेते हैं हम अदरक लेते हैं हम लेमन लेते हैं हम सारी मल्टीविटामिन लेते हैं जिंक लेते हैं क्या इसका असर क्या ये हमारे लिए गर्म होता है और ये गर्म होने से हमारा अबॉर्शन होता है तो ये भी गलत फहमी है तो आप इम्यूनिटी बढ़ाने वाली जो कुछ भी चीज है ये सेफली प्रेगनेंसी में दे सकते हो इसके बाद आपको एक प्रिकॉशन लेनी आपको उनको भीड़ की जगह में नहीं लेके जाना है बस उतनी ही प्रिकॉशन आपको लेना है भीड़ से दूर रखना है घर में कोई पॉजिटिव हो गया तो उनसे भी दूर रखना है उनसे उनको आइसोलेट करना है बस ये स्टैंडर्ड प्रिकॉशन आपको लेने हैं पंकज जी ने पूछा है सपोज एनी फीमेल टेक टेक दिस कोविड वैक्सीन एंड गेट प्रेगनेंट विद इन एटी डेज ऑफ सेकेंड वैक्सीन Uh, what about her second dose? Will she be able to take the next vaccine? Pankaj ji, ये बहुत ही अच्छा सवाल है पहला वैक्सीन तो उसने ले लिया है वो प्रेगनेंट हो गई है हमारे गाइडलाइन के अनुसार हम वैक्सीन नहीं दे सकते जो मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ हेल्थ एंड फैमिली वेलफेयर ने हमें प्रेगनेंसी में वैक्सीन लेने के लिए मना किया है लेकिन पूरा विश्व ये वैक्सीन ले रहा है तो एक्चुअली ये गवर्नमेंट गाइडलाइंस रिलीज हो जाने के बाद आप तो ले ही सकते हो लेकिन आजकल बम्बई में भी डॉक्टर्स और उनके एसोसिएशन में भी बताया है टाइम्स में न्यूज आया था कि वो डॉक्टर्स ने भी उन डॉक्टर्स ने भी बताया गया बताया है कि जो प्रेगनेंट प्रेगनेंसी में जो गर्भवती महिला खुद रिटर्न कंसेंट को साइन करके लेने के लिए तैयार है कि मैं ये मेरी रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी से रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी पे ले रही हो और वो डॉक्टर से एक सर्टिफिकेट लाए तो उनको भी ये वैक्सीन देने की आप दे सकते हो लेकिन प्रेग, खुद प्रेग्नेंट लेडी ने खुद गर्भवती महिला ने कंसेंट लिख के देना है लेकिन पूरे विश्व में प्रेग्नेंसी में ये वैक्सीन में आधा विश्व अपन हम आधी बात करेंगे जो डेवलप्ड कंट्रीज है जैसे कि यूरोपियन कंट्रीज है अमेरिका है उनमें भी ये हर एक प्रेगनेंसी प्रेग्नेंट लेडीज को दिए दिया दे जाता है दिया जाता है तो प्रेगनेंसी में वैक्सीन लेना नहीं लेना ये खुद के ऊपर निर्भर रखता है हम फोर्सफुली भी नहीं दे सकते ये उनकी चॉइस है ये लेना है क्या लेना नहीं लेना है लेकिन ये सेफ हो सकता है जैसे मैंने आपको एग्जाम्पल्स बताई जैसे कोवैक्सिन कोवैक्सिन ये किल्ड वैक्सीन है हम बहुत सारी किल्ड वैक्सीन प्रेगनेंसी में दे सकते हैं तो ये आपके प्रश्न का उत्तर हो गया राजस्वी ने पूछा है मैडम मैंने कोविशील्ड का फर्स्ट वैक्सीन लिया है फोर्टीन मई को एंड आई हैव टेस्टेड पॉजिटिव इज इट इज देर एनी रिस्क राजस्वी मैंने अभी ये अपनी शो में अपना हम डिस्कशन जो कर रहे हैं तो इन सारी बातों में बता दिया है कि आपको बिल्कुल डरना नहीं है वैक्सीन आपने ले लिया है तो डेफिनेटली आपको एडिशनल प्रोटेक्शन एंटीबॉडीज के रूप में मिलने वाला है सेकेंड डोज लेना है नहीं लेना है ये आप पे निर्भर करता है आपको कंसेंट दे के ये लेना है या नहीं लेना है लेकिन हमने ये देखा है प्रेगनेंसी का प्रेगनेंसी के दौरान वायरस का संक्रमण होने के बावजूद भी 
जब प्रेगनेंसी पे असर नहीं होता तो शायद वैक्सीन लेने के बाद भी आपके प्रेगनेंस आपकी प्रेगनेंसी पे कुछ असर नहीं होने वाला है तो आप एकदम निश्चिंत रहिए आपको बिल्कुल टेंशन लेने की जरूरत नहीं है उसके साथ ही अगला प्रश्न ममता मीना जी ने पूछा है थ्री मंथ्स का बेबी है आ, क्या मैम मैं वैक्सीन ले सकती हूँ जैसे मैंने बताया है कि आपको वो वैक्सीन जरूर लेना है ये आपके प्रोटेक्शन के लिए भी है और आपको जो नन्ना मुन्ना बच्चा है जो आप कि आपके स्तनपान आपसे स्तनपान कर रहा है आपके ब्रेस्ट मिल्क उसका पोषक तत्व है ये इससे उसका पोषण हो, हो रहा है तो उसके लिए भी ये महत्वपूर्ण है क्योंकि जब आपने वैक्सीन लगवाया तो आप में एंटीबॉडीज तैयार हो गए और वो एंटीबॉडीज हमारे बेबी ब्रेस्ट मिल्क के थ्रू अपने नन्हे मुन्ने तक जा सकते हैं और अपने बेबी को भी प्रोटेक्शन मिल सकता है तो ये है आपके प्रश्न का आंसर तो आज इस सेशन में हमने कोविड और प्रेगनेंसी प्रेगनेंसी और वैक्सीन इस बारे पे बहुत सारी जानकारी दी है आपके इस बारे में कोई प्रश्न रहेंगे तो हमें जरूर लिखिए हम आप आपके ये सारे प्रश्नों का उत्तर देना पसंद करेंगे और आप सबको Uh, मैं निश्चित तौर पे शुभकामना देना चाहती हूँ आप, आप, आपकी हेल्थ के बारे में स्टे प्रोटेक्टेड स्टे सेफ आपको खुद को भी सेफ रखना है और हमारी जो छोटी नन्ही मुन्नी जाने उसको भी सेफ रखना है तो ये आपकी मॉरल रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी है ये सामाजिक रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी भी है कि हमें ये पैंडमिक से जूझना है और ये पैंडमिक का असर जल्द से जल्द कम करने के लिए हम सबको वैक्सीन लेना है धन्यवाद